Back to Straight Facts, it's Tuesday, myself, Terry Flewers, and of course, the infamous Lee Gunner. How are you, mate? Uh, I've still got a bit of a head cold, man. The weather here, Tell, has been crazy, man. It's like English weather. Uh, it was raining earlier. It's grey, it's dark, it's dank, it's windy. It's not been nice, man. I'm freezing cold, maybe because I've got my fan on, but it's just cold in here, man. But listen, Old Trafford is falling down. Do, 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 do. That song's so catchy. Yeah. Ten Hag is a clown. Do, 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 do. Players are staying in 10 more years. Do, 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 do. Lee Garner is on the beers. <laughs> Mate, that song has got to be song of the season. Terry flew oh, Terry is in tears. tears. <laughs> Mate, I'm done. I'm done. Mate, do you know what? Like, I saw the song, and this is how this is how bad it is. I actually laughed. I'm at a point now where if I don't laugh at my own club, I'll cry. It, 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 it is horrendous. And obviously, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna look at Chelsea's performance at the weekend, yeah. we're about Arsenal being unbeaten still, big Carabao Cup game for them. Um, we will be touching on number eight as well. Number eight for Lionel Jeez. Messi. Um <laughs> Messi the eighth, um, as, as we see. So lots to go for on the show today. But I did, I did want to start with Man United. One, because I like getting United out of the way because they bother me. But it, it was a shambles of a performance at the weekend. And even worse than that for me is the manager's comments. The manager's comments that we will never see his style of play at this club. He is not trying to implement it. I don't know what he's trying to implement, but whatever it is, whatever it's called, it isn't working. And there are times where I've, I, I have defended him and I felt, like, okay, well, we know what he's about. We know how good he can make a team play. It's a work in progress. Not everybody gets there straight away. To know that he isn't trying to implement it and the way we're playing is by design. The fact that he has brought in 14 players in totality, including loans, I think nine permanent signings. And he isn't trying to implement the way we know he can make a, a team play. The fact that you start Regulon and Varane on the bench, but put Lindelof at left back, you play Bruno on the right again when he is horrendous there. You take off Amrabat, who was keeping our shape together, and you put McTominay back there, who you wanted to sell. I'm, I'm just at a point where I've completely lost faith in this guy. It's one of those moments where I have to look at you, Lee, and say... Maybe not about every single element, but overarching, you were right about this manager. He isn't correct for Man United. But do you know what the deepest, most worst pain of all is for me in this? Is like the feeling that nothing he's going to get better even if we sack him. It's almost like a, you know, some clubs, if your manager's struggling, so say Pep leaves City, new guy comes in, does okay, but isn't quite. The fans know if they sack him and bring in somebody else who's better, they're probably going to get better and win, right? That's the sobering factor for us. We can sack Ten Hag, and there's real good reasons to get rid of him. But who are we going to bring in? There's, it, It's crazy, and we know he's on the way out, and a lot of Man United fans are in denial, Lee, but there's story after story now. The players questioning his training methods, questioning his tactics. This is the, 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 play, this is the card they always play in the build-up to a manager leaving. How much longer do you think he's got? Do you believe he should be given any more time? What's your reading of the current situation at Man United? He's gone. He's finished. He's done. Yeah, his, his comments were a disgrace. And the way he stood there after the game with a smug grin on his face and went, tactics, tactics. Like, I'm sorry, mate. You, 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 you asked for an emergency loan for a left back. Right? You get a left back and then bench him for the biggest game of the season. Bobby's send off. And you play a centre back at left back. You then play the centre back pairing that started in August the 19th, 2018 at Leicester in a 2-0 win or 2-1 win against Wolves. Right? That is a disgrace, yeah? Johnny Evans started in the 6-1 defeat six year, uh, Sorry, 12 years ago when he got sent yeah. off against City. Right? The starting 11 was just basically keep the score down. That was all it was. I looked at that and I was like, Amrabat and McTominay in midfield, Bruno on the right. Like, fair enough, Dallow at right back. Yeah, Harry Maguire, cool, maybe. But because of injuries, yeah. Player? Yeah, why is yeah. Varane not in there and put Maguire on the other side? Yeah, Regulon at left back. Yeah, at least you have somebody that can get up and down, cross a ball. 
Yeah, like midfield Amrabat and McTominay. Like, what was that all about? And then you hook Amrabat off. Yeah, he went great in the first half, but you hook him off at half time. You've got Ericsson, fair enough, in his best position, number 10. Rashford doing nothing again. Like, it was just a bit of a mess. The, the striker had no service, and then you hook him off, and everyone's booing. Like, it made no sense to me what he was trying to do. And, like, you got the goalkeeper was man of the match. Like, he, he kept the score down because, like, yeah. Jeff, I predicted five or six nil. I did a watch along for that on the other channel, and I was like, this is going to be a cricket score. And as soon as the goal goes in, the floodgates are opening. And mm -hmm. then the keeper made a great save, albeit straight at him, but we've seen him straight at him in his fumble this season. So, like, right on half time from Haaland. And I'm like, cool, let's see what he does at half time now. And then he brings Mason Mount on. I think he had eight touches. Like, embarrassing, absolutely embarrassing. And I've seen you have some embarrassing games all season, really. But to do it in a Manchester derby for, for Bobby Charlton's send-off and that, man, like, pff, absolutely yeah. disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And then not only that, after you put in that level of performance, your manager's standing there with a smug grin on his face after the game saying, tactics, tactics. And, yeah, we can't, we can't play the same as Ajax can play. Well, why? You've bought half of their players, mate. Mm. Like, why can't you play like them? And do you know what's even more yeah. baffling to me, right? Is you come from a league that is weaker than the Premier League. You're buying up a load of players. I think 10 or 11, nine players, something like that. Have come nine, that yeah. League, played in that league and some played under him, obviously. And then you expect to have a performance level better than where you are in the league right now. Well, that league's not very good. Yeah, there'll be one or two, three, four standout players over that league, but... You can't go and get seven, eight, nine and put them in a team. But with the players you already have, you should be doing better than you are, and especially in that game. Yeah, Mate, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I, I look at it this way. Not everything that's gone on in the last year or so that he's been there is his fault. I'm not going to rewrite history. I don't think, you know, me and you agreed on this at the time. I don't think he was particularly wrong to be looking beyond Cristiano Ronaldo as an example but you had to replace him with somebody better and the club didn't do that. There, there's things that I think he's been right to do. Um, I still think he was right to replace David De Gea because I think David De Gea was past it. Whether he's picked the right guy or not it is, it is remains to be seen. But we saw in the last couple of games, we've seen the very best of um, Onana. And I hope we see more of it because he's a very good goalkeeper. But I, what you said about... The City game is epitomizes everything that's wrong with, with Ten Hag at this club. He has no plan. He has no idea. He has no identity. And when you think about players in this team, we all saw what Amrabat did at the World Cup. But if you watch any Fiorentina games, you'd see how good he was. Everybody watched the cup final against West Ham when he was up against Rice, who we know is brilliant. And he absolutely was, was sensational. He's looked nowhere near that level in the Man United team. As an, as an example, he brought in Anthony. And Anthony, he's been horrendous for large parts, 95% of his Man United career, but he is not a transition player. He is somebody that plays in a more intricate passing system. Now, whether that would have worked or not, we don't know, but he isn't a transition player. So you spend £80 million on a player who plays the system that we thought we were employing you to deliver, and you go with a completely different one that's unproven to you. That's why I've lost my faith in him everybody's regressed and gone backwards. Whether you like or rate the player or not is almost irrelevant because that, that, that debate almost becomes superficial now because some don't like Bruno and Rashford, some do. But it's not as though one or two players are playing badly. It's everybody. And we saw this at the beginning of the season where every, a lot of United fans turned on Casemiro. Too old, leg gone. No, it's his system. Because he's been missing for three games and it's been absolutely identical, which is also why, but drop Rashford. I still don't think we'll get better. There's a comment that came through a minute ago. And it's an interesting one. Um, it says here, uh, so Terry is the kind... I'm just getting a bit of echo from you. I'm going to see if I can sort of well, where that's coming from. Let's see if I do that and make that change. He says, Terry is the kind is the kind of people, I'm a person, but okay, uh, who got cheated on four times, got cheated on again, and says, what's the point of breaking her up? It's going to happen again. I, I have no idea of that analogy, my friend. If you're trying to say that we shouldn't... I'm not saying we shouldn't sack managers... I'm saying don't get your hopes up that we become as good as Man City just through sacking a manager, my friend, because there's bigger, there's bigger problems at the club. Um, King Cannon and I are here with an interesting comment that says, sag, toxic, massive, four-headed man-child, me. Arsenal fan pretend, uh, parading as a Man United fan. 
Uh, his mother is at fault. Uh, to, I blame her for how he acts. So you're blaming my my poor old dear mum <laughs> for, 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 for me saying this manager is failing. The fact that he isn't trying to deliver the style of play that he was famed for and rated for. The fact that he makes horrendous substitutions continuously has wasted £400 million on the wrong profile of player based on what he's now telling us he's trying to do. Me wanting him removed for that, but at the same time not believing that the Glazers, who have fouled five managers on the bounce, will not get the sixth manager on the, on the bounce right. You think my mother is a bad mother because I hold that opinion? King Cantona, I do have a bit of a big forehead. That's the only bit on here that I would say. What do you mean about his time will come? I don't get it. What, what, what? Yeah, oh, his time will come. <laughs> I mean, again, King Cantona, if you fancy dropping me a DM, I will send you my address where I work out every day and you can come have a chat with me. Um, I guarantee you, you don't turn up King Cantona, my old mate. But listen, he, by the way, don't worry about me. Come sat to my mum's face and watch what she does to you, bruv. Like, she'll iron you out. One, uh, my mum's left ook. Would knock you out, King Cantona. Do you know what I'm saying? But but before you come and address me, you probably got to put your pants on in your mum's basement. But there we go, my friend. But uh, but on the overarching point, it isn't toxic for Man United fans to call this out. Whether, whether you didn't rate him before or you had faith in him, to hear what he has said, you look at the players that he has purchased, none of this makes sense. And all it's going to do by he keeping him... Is sacked is because Ajax are currently sat bottom of the league. Yeah, and he could go back. He's given them about 200 odd million quid. Yeah, from Man United's money. Yeah, he's got money to spend if he goes back there and he'll go back and be the hero. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe that was the plan all along. <laughs> go to United, yeah. buy a load of players, try and do something at United and we'll bring you back. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's, yeah, maybe that has been the master plan. There's an interesting comment here from uh, Maximum. It says, Terry, admit Mount is a flop. See, this is the thing. I, I, Gary Neville said something today and I, I think he's so right. And I want, I want to read out what he said because... The problem is if you dislike a player, you'll disregard what Gary Neville was said. If you like certain players that are struggling, you'll probably agree with it. I'm just going to be very much on the fence, if you like, with this and say, well, I think we should apply it to everybody. He says, if we, the class of 92, had come through the club at this moment in time, in this environment, we wouldn't be successful. So I don't blame these players anymore. And it's part of me that also agrees with that. Now, if you hate Bruno, you hate Rashford, or if you hate Sancho and you hated Pogba and you hate Marcio, you might view it differently. But I've always been fairly... I've criticised all of those players individually. I've been asking for Rashford to be dropped for a while. But if we're looking at this and saying there's no plan, the training's bad, the, the, the plan doesn't ma match, he's signing players that are profiled to play a certain type and he's doing the opposite, I can't totally blame the players for looking disillusioned. You, you just can't. At the end of the day... If, if, if I hire someone who is, I don't know, a pastry chef and he joins my, my restaurant and I say to him, right, you're making cocktails today, how motivated is he going to be? Because he's not, he's not a cocktail waiter, he's a pastry chef. And we're doing that at Man United. We're bringing people in and we're misprofiling them. We're giving them the wrong activities. The team's being destroyed. I can understand it. doesn't make it right, but I do get what Gary Neville is saying here. And it, by the way, it doesn't mean a new manager fixes it because it, this would be the fifth foul permanent manager on the bounce. And that's why I feel so disillusioned as a Man United fan, because I just don't see how anyone can have faith in this club to get it right at, on the 6th of 10th. I don't know what you think about that, mate. Yeah, but where do you go? Like, do you let this guy stay? Give him no, more money to no. waste and burn? But then there's got to be a solution somewhere. You're not getting the Glazers out anytime soon. Like, you've been saying it for a year, talking about the Glazers potentially selling. They ain't sold, have they? So, no, but, no, you're right. Where do you go from there? Do you, do you just let the manager stay? Yeah, and just hope it turns around where mm. it might not. And let's be real, it don't look like any of them are playing for him. No, you're right. right. So if you do sack him, then where do you go? Who wants the job? Is a top manager going to go and take that job? An Ancelotti, a Simeone, even a Conte. Yeah, Conte could go in there and just pee them glazers off even more. <laughs> like, you know, it'd it do the Jose one and say, I asked for six players, I got one. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah he, no he, he, top he, manager he, is going to look at that job and say, no, I, hear you. Bro, I, I hear you. And do you know what? To answer your question, I think we've got to go for somebody in the middle of, middle of the road. Ge genuinely, someone that is... I we are run. I think you've got to go for a top, top manager and just throw the money at him. Like, Simeone's on 40 million a year, right? And mm. yes, he's got the freedom in Madrid. But 
he knows he's going to get a load more money at Man United. And you know he's going to get a performance out of some of them players because just how he is. Look at what he's done at Atleti. Go and throw 50, 60 million quid a year at him for three years. That'd be the best money you ever spend. Can I ask you a question on that? Like, gen- genuinely. Whether he goes or not, you no, never know. I, it's gen- do, do you... Nobody has had what I call proper success at Man United. There's been... Last season, we improved on a cup. Jose, first season, won two trophies. Second season, he came second. You know, LVG, you know, he, he won an FA Cup. There's been moments of success and some little peaks and little purple patches of good form. Do you think Diego Simeone could get hold of this club and these players, as toxic as it is, and turn us into, at the very least, title contenders within three years? I, 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 listen, the amount, the amount of money you've spent Right, you spent more than Man City, so you can buy and spend your way out of it. But the problem you've had is that you keep hold of the wrong players first and foremost. Yeah, look at Rashford. Rashford, the season before last, scored four goals. Last season, yeah, fi- final season of his contract or whatever it was, he goes and has a purple patch. All of a sudden, he's got a great new contract, and now he ain't scoring again. Ironic that, isn't it? Yeah, the previous time he was up for a renewal of his contract, I think he did the same. <laughs> like, I think he scored 17 that season as well, didn't he, in the league? So, you know, or there or thereabouts. <clears throat> so it's almost like then it's like, oh, I can't get rid of him because he bagged 30 in all comps. And if I do get rid of him, then I have to go and spend massive money on another player. And that player is going to cost over 100 million to replace mm. his goals. And is that player going to want to come? And then will it happen? Because he's coming from overseas, whatever, wherever, yeah? Mm. Right, for me, wrong choices, left, right, and centre. Instead of going for Hoyland, yeah, you should have been throwing the whole lot at Harry Kane. Yeah, you've done 130 odd million quid on Mason Mount and Hoyland. Just mm-hmm. put 130 to Harry Kane. Do you think Harry Kane wouldn't have come United if you bid for him? Mate, no, so, so, mate, I, I, I totally agree with all of that. Like, I, I, I would have loved to sign Harry Kane. I think we should have done it. There is definitely if question. Mark. To cut you off. If you had signed mm-hmm. Harry Kane, say mm-hmm. you put 130 million on the table. Yes, Daniel Levy probably would have made it. Oh, we want 140, 150. We'll just pay it then because you know he guarantees you 30 goals a season, mm-hmm. right? Which is what Rashford can do once every now and again. Go and put 40 on the table. You get Madison. There's 170. Now you've got a creative outlet that we know is very creative, even in a poor Leicester team. You've got 22 or 19 GA or whatever it was last mm-hmm. season in a team that got relegated. Right? You've now got Harry Kane, who scored nearly half of Tottenham's goals last season. Put them two in the same team. Now keep your Rashford if you want to keep him. Right? But now you've got a better passer in midfield and you've got a better striker that can also drop deep and link play. All of a sudden, your wingers, Anthony, yes, he's not the most electric, dynamic, direct. He's more of a He's a poor man's Grealish, let's be real. Yeah, he's in the team to do the same as Grealish, but he's not on that level. No, I, I mean... I, and now I you're getting an output that. from him. Then you yeah. can have your Sancho in the team. And we know Sancho is a ball retention, drag you up the pitch. So now, if you want to play the Ten Hag Ajax style, you now have the players to do it. Now all you need to do is go and buy a couple of centre-backs or DMs or whatever. You've already got Casemiro there. Go and get Amrabat if you want to get him, right? You've got McTominay if you want to still keep him. He can come in... And break up play every now and again, ill passion and all of that lot, yeah. But now you've got Varan, yeah, you've got Lissandro, yeah. You didn't need Johnny Evans in that team. I don't know how much he's on, but it's peanuts probably. You don't need him there. You've got Reggett on call, you've got uh Wambasaka out injured, you've got Luke Shaw. All of a sudden, if you have your better players fit with a Harry Kane, with a mate, um uh, a Madison, them two signings alone, you would not be sat eighth losing seven out of 14 games. And you'd have a better style of play. You'd have an identity and your fans wouldn't be getting the Norwich scarves out again. But, but, but instead, you go and spend that money yeah, on a load of crap. That okay, ain't but, but, this, but, but that's exactly the point there, though. And again, in an ideal world, buy the right players, bring in a manager of the class of a Simeone, the class of a Conte, the, the class of a Zidane. You buy five or six top-class players and you can win. The problem in reality for Man United is that this never happens. And the reason why this doesn't happen is because we actually give too much power to the manager. We don't back, I've said this for years, we don't back them properly. And when I say back them properly, they don't have the right kind of support. All the other clubs that these managers have been successful at, 
You look at the way City operate as an example. These people all have world-class footballing directors and world-class football programs behind the manager. So there is a cohesive approach. They all pull in the same direction towards signings. And there's an understanding of what's going on. So if you look at Ten Hag as an example, because it's fresh in our minds, he is saying, he hasn't come in and said to them, I'm going to try, we're going to play a similar style to that of Ajax. We're going to adapt. We're going to do this. So we need this profile of player. And the whole um, recruitment team, all the people that are running things go, right, we're looking for this profile of player that can play this type of intricate football with ball retention is key. We're not signing, we're, we're not signing players like that. Well, we're giving new contracts to players that don't play like that. We're signing people that you assume would fit that profile because they've played that kind of football before for him or for other managers. But then what he's doing, he's introducing a style of football which is completely adjacent. It's completely different. And that's the biggest problem at Man United. So as much as you are right in the theory that you put out there, I agree with it. My issue is I have no faith it will ever be delivered. So you sack Ten Hag tomorrow, I'm not going to bat an eyelid. You employ Simeone the next day. There is a part of me that will be excited. But the sobering thought is, I do not believe there'll be a good enough structure behind him to ensure that everything's going right. Because managers make mistakes. And at the end of the day, when you actually speak to managers, when, when was our, Wenger was at his best when, um, what's his name? <coughs> da, uh, is it Dean? David Dean, yeah. David Dean. When David Dean and him were together, that was when he was at his best. It's the same as Michael Jackson was at his best when he was with Quincy Jones. The Spice Girls were at the height of their powers Bogey, when they were Simon. Bogey with, um, what's his name? David David Gill, David David Gill, yeah. David, David Gill. There's partnership. Well, yeah, but at the same, yeah, but at the same time. Sorry, sorry let me just let me just so came in. No, I get you. Let me, let me, let me, no, hang on, let You're me. You're going to get a better quality of player because no. he's got a better IQ no. of okay, okay. So I, 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 okay, I understand that, and and that could be true. But the reason I'm skeptical over this is because every time I listen to these great managers speak, there you even look at Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool fans that love him have all been very strong on this. As soon as Michael Edwards left. The quality of player that Klopp maybe wanted wasn't the same as him. Klopp, it wasn't Klopp who wanted the most Salas and the Marnes. He wanted different people. So there's this element of, I think you need someone alongside you who keeps you on track. And I think everybody needs that. And it's that missing structure at Man United, which stops me from feeling confident that if we bring in somebody new, it will work. And the reason why I say that is because this group of people picking managers have now fouled, in my opinion, five times on the bounce. So I just have zero faith in... Yeah, but sorry, in, sorry to cut you off. Right. The group, the group of, of the board and the hierarchy and all of that at your football club, have they picked all of these five managers? Because last time I checked, they, they haven't. <clears throat> they've, they've changed some of the board members or some of the, the so, higher so, positions. So to break it down for you, Joel, Joel Glazer is the yeah, guy... Yeah, the Glazers have been there. No, no, so, 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 no, so, so, no, 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 because there, there isn't really a below that. You've got Woodward and you've got... Uh, you had a guy that was called, you got uh, you had judges who used to do the negotiating and you've now got Richard Arnold who are involved in that process. But every manager signing, every manager sacking, every player signing is signed off by Joel Glazer. He is the guy that runs the football operation. So yes, Ed Woodward is, is in second command and does all the dog work, but Joel Glazer on the board is the guy that does it. So he signs off on everything. He's the individual that will say, yes, we'll buy this player. No, we won't buy this individual. He has the ultimate say so when the managers all say yes i've got complete power what that actually means is i can say yes as long as joel glazer signs off on it they don't have more power than him and until that changes i have no faith and even if simeone is the right guy and he's picking the right people they'll do what they did to joe say they'll pull the rug from under his feet so i'm all i'm saying is and, and sometimes this is hard for people to digest i'm not against sacking ten hag now my only point is i am no matter who we employ I'm making this promise to myself now live on, on, on Straight Facts with Lee Gunner. I won't be getting gassed. I won't be getting excited. I won't be sitting again. Wow, what might, what might we do? My feeling is going to be fairly pessimistic. I'll support and I'll praise when things go right. But I am not allowing myself ever again until there is complete structural reform at my club to get excited about any signing or any new manager that comes in because we just foul every single time and each failure gets more painful. Each failure gets deeper. And I think each failure sets us back even further than we already are. So I, I don't know what we're going to do next. Again, if we are really trying to play this pragmatic style that the manager's saying, the manager we should bring in next should be a pragmatist because if that's yeah, the only way he's playing. <laughs> well, maybe. I, right, now, I, I, right now, I'm just at a point where I, I probably do care in reality who we bring in. I'm so angry. No, okay. I've had this before with Wenger, mate. You get to the point where you're just like, I can't be asked with this. I'm done. Yeah, I'm past caring. <laughs>
Yeah. No. But the thing is, I, even when I was going to games in the last bit of Venga, it was like you, you can have your agendas against the manager or the players and whatever. Yeah. But as soon as you walk in the ground, yeah, you try and support the team. Yeah. But if the team ain't giving you anything back, Mm. That's when you have to get on the club and on the team on match day. Yeah, and I felt that your fans at the weekend, when Rashford's missing an open goal, 2 0 down, yeah, and they were standing there, well done, Marcus. Go on, son. Oh, the next one's in. No, 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 no. They should be absolutely cussing him. Yeah, and if your fans were all in unison in that stadium, and I know a lot of them were, I've heard Said saying on shows with me and, and his other shows he's done, a lot of them fans in the ground have turned on him. Whereas a lot of the fans online that I've seen, yeah, they will still ten hard can turn it around. Yeah, and let's be real, I mean, they care more about the online fans because there's more of them that can walk in a football no, stadium every weekend. And I appreciate that. For me, the reason I don't believe he can turn it around is the, the leaks that are coming out. There is the not even about a... the leaks, Terry. The leaks have been there for time. Yeah, Jaden no, Sancho no, the, absolutely the... destroyed this guy and will outlive him. So, so the, these again, though these these leaks have been there for a couple of months. It's the final leaks this week, which I was waiting for. Which I said on the, I think it was the 18th of September. I said, you know, he's going to be done as soon as the training ground leaks come out in terms of his training methods, and I also what people have got, and, and also what people have got to focus on is how low the share price is now. It's not quite as low as when they sacked Ollie, but it's getting towards that stage. And what the Glazers did over the last year when the share price rose is they would have been. As it got to a certain height, they'd have been selling off shares and making million, hundreds of millions of pounds. Now it's dropping again. As it's got to this point, it's leveled out where it is now. They'll start buying back these A shares. And then what they will eventually do when they know the timing is right, nothing to do with football, all to do with money. They will sack him and they will employ a new manager and they will go for someone that gets fans excited, gets the media excited, gets the stock rooms and the stock market excited because then the share price skyrockets. And they make money. The last two managerial sackings on the stock market have made the Glazers personally $500 million. So that's another motivation for them. So if the share price is really high right now, his job would be safer. The fact it's so low, his job is, is, is all these factors in, in line. He's done out here for me. And the Glazers, by the way, will be part of the reason the leaks come out because for them, it's all about making money. So they don't care whether you do it within the Champions League or whether... I mean, hiring and sacking managers is more lucrative for Man United than winning a treble. Mate, the only so, time you ever spend money, it's real crazy. money, the only time you ever really spend proper money is when you don't qualify for Champions League. Then as soon as you get in the Champions League, you do the bare minimum. Well, they, they do that. You're absolutely right. And on top of that, we're a going concern. So they have to spend money to keep the value of the business up. So they have to buy players. It's just par for the course. But they make their money one day through the sale of the club and they make their money on the stock market. So forget the dividends, as, as, as annoying as when they take that is 10, 20 million to drop in the ocean to what they make on the stock market of the continuing recycling of those A shares. They, 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 they buy and sell at all the right times and they do it in a methodology which is not against the rules either. Um, some super chats here I want to go to. Uh, first one says Kane would probably die at Old Trafford as well. Zombie club. Well, listen, I, I don't think, I think he's too good a player to die. And I think good players... Yeah, good players can do it regardless. James Madison's a very good player and done it in a poor Leicester team that got relegated. Mm. Yeah, Harry Kane's light years clear of Madison. I like them both, yeah. But Harry Kane would do it in any club. Yeah, because he's a top draw, draw footballer. And even when Tottenham have been absolutely awful, like last season, he still scored 30 goals. Mm. No, I hear you, bro. Uh, Harold here says, Ten Hag has never uh, needed to implement anything at Ajax and uh, at Bayern. Youth system, consistency and hierarchy took care of it. Uh, he needs, uh, he had a great generation uh, or players at Ajax. I think those are fair points. At the same time, you should watch the way Man United's academy moves the ball and plays football. It's very good. Our Not academy actually played... Generational players. What generational players? Well, is he, is he, but on, on, the, on the, the, the beginning point, Man United's youth team play a better brand of football than Man United's first team play, and it has been like that for a long, long, uh, long, long time. Uh, this is, uh, you ain't a reliable source, Terry. Well, I never claim to be a source. I'm a fan, so I've never once said I'm a source. It says, you defended Oli until the end. Again, it's completely untrue. What I said, again, what I said about Oli, and I know why people do this to me, because you want to, I'll always admit when I got something wrong like on Ten Hag in terms of how good I thought he could get us playing football. But what I said at the beginning of Ten Hag's appointment is the same as I said towards the end of Oli's reign. And that I'm 100% accurate on. doesn't matter who we bring in, it will fail. 18 months, two years later, we'll be back where we were. And it's happened like clockwork because this club is toxic and is run poorly. And there's no uh, internal cohesion. So 
I didn't defend Oli. I defended the idea of sacking him because I didn't believe sacking him, bringing in a new manager would move us forward. Look where we are. And if he leaves today, Ten Hag, we're actually in a worse position league-wise than when Oli was here. Therefore, it hasn't moved us forward. Yes, we won a trophy and that's great, but we didn't move forward as a football club. The same as, and I'll keep the same energy, what I said about Jose, well, them times, Lee, and you remember this, yes, he won us that trophy, but by the end of leaving, we're in a worse place than when he took over. And it isn't about just what you achieve at your peak. It's the condition you leave the club in, the stewardship nature of it. Do you leave it in a better position than when you came in? If you don't, then large parts of your job whether you're a football coach, a teacher, or, or, or you're selling mobile phones, you're, you've failed if you've done that. So I didn't defend Oli until Joe, then. On Jose's side, if, defended... they'd him what he want, if they'd given him what he wanted, he might still be the manager now and would have been successful. Mate, he might mate, I don't, I don't disagree. And this is, this is why I say every, every single time it's different in terms of what they do, but they ruin it. With, with him, they should have sold Martial and sold Pogba because he wanted them out because he didn't get on with them. Mm. Instead, they allowed it to become toxic. The dressing room fell out with him. And again, they made so much more, much more money sacking him and bringing in a manager than they than they did through winning trophies. It and was Van Howe as well. Van Howe shouldn't have been sacked. He just won you a trophy. They should have let him go again the following season, see how it goes, and then maybe sack him. Well, Van Gaal said that to my face when I, when I used to um, take care of an element of his banking uh, at my old job. <laughs> and he, he legitimately oh, no, said that. He was, up there, yeah? <laughs> mate, do, do you know what's really weird about the meeting I had with him? I've told this story before, but the day I had a meet, one of the final meetings I had while he was still in the UK, he he was in Manchester. I had to go up and see him. And it was the day after Chelsea beat us. I want to say 4-1 or 4-0 with Jose as manager. And when Sky News was on, every time he saw the goals going against United, he stood up in the air and went, yes! He was a very eccentric guy. Like he'd phone me and go, it's Louis van Gaal. Like really loudly down the phone. He was a great guy. He was, Mike Schmalling. Mike Schmalling. <laughs> he was fun. When he fell over on the floor. Yeah, when, when the guy only fell over. That was yeah, you lot. Uh, yeah, he, he was great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he said the same thing. He said, I needed that third year and I needed the players to unlock teams he said i had the system in terms of retaining the ball but i didn't have the overall quality in terms of that final pass and i always said imagine him with a with a, the next summer we've got paul pogba imagine paul pogba in that system unlocking teams could have been different but there we go uh when united were doing well last season ten hag and his squad is brilliant will challenge for the league next when ten hag's failing glazer's fault not logical but no one is, again, I, I can't talk for anybody else, but I haven't sat here and said it's all the Glazers' fault. I've sat here and said that he has come in and not implemented his style. He has come in and bought the wrong players for the style that he is trying to implement. And for me, that makes his position untenable. That is not blaming the Glazers. When you dig deeper into the club's issues, what you do say is, how is the sporting department, the footballing department of the club, allowing that to happen? If you go for a job and on your CV it says, these are my skills... But then when you start your job, you say, well, I'm not going to implement any of my skills or experience. I'm going to do it all in a new way. Your employers are going to pull you up on that. Go, no, we've employed you based on what you've done before. So again, I'm not sitting here. I don't, I really, really, really respect the super chat. But I have not said for one second that it's all the Glazers' fault and not held the manager accountable. No, but Perhaps... a, lot of, a lot of people do, Terry. And I think that's the point. I know like, you don't necessarily do it, but when you lose... Yeah, it's, oh, Glazers out. We had it with the Cronkies. When Arsenal were getting panned left, right and centre, oh, Cronkies out. We'll never win anything under this lot, right? But now we're doing all right, albeit we ain't won anything for three and a half years, but we're doing mm. all right in terms of better league positions. Yeah, all of a sudden, nobody mentions the Cronkies anymore. Right? And it's, it's all relative to a result yeah. and how, how the fans feel on any given weekend. If the results are going well, no talk of Glazers. As soon as you get a bad run of form, yeah, like after you had them three wins in a row, you know, against teams you should be beating, nobody said about the Glazers. All of a sudden, you put in a, a poor performance at the weekend, a bad, really bad performance, spineless. Mm. All of a sudden, oh, it's the Glazers again, and that's how a lot but, of your fans I, are. I, I agree. I agree with you with, with the ones who do that. I, all I'm saying to the super chatter is when I'm talking on the terrace, and it's just me and one other person, like specify because that ain't what I do. I want these Glazers. If we won the treble this season, which we're not going to do now. I would still want the Glazers to go. Uh, Maradon here says, so you're blaming the Glazers for Seven Hog wanting Mount. No, I've blamed the manager for wanting Mount and having no plan for him. So again, you're making that up, Maradon, but thank you. Uh, hired a pastry chef uh, to 
uh, enhance the desserts at my restaurant. After a year, he said he would never make a dessert again uh, since he now works in a restaurant, uh, not a bakery. Uh, Ten Hag's deci- uh, decisions are ridiculous. And, and do you know what, George? That is the best super chat on this I've had. It is articulated so beautifully. It is absolutely wonderful. And you're absolutely right. He could definitely implement, if he tried, that Ajax-esque style of play, the passing and the ball retention, because it's all about coaching and it's all about drills. It's all about repetition. Would we play as well as Ajax do it within a year? I don't think so. But you're absolutely right. His decision-making is horrendous. Then you look at the sporting director element and the club allowing him to do that. That's why I don't let the ball off completely. It's an absolute... Madness. Okay, can I just say one more thing to that super chat? It's a great analogy, the, the thing he's put in there, yeah? But why are you trying to replicate a team that's not anywhere near the level of Man United? Yeah, yes, cool, Ajax history, tradition, all of that lot, yeah? But they're in a poor league. They're currently sat bottom of it now. Okay, that coincides with Ten Hag leaving. Cool. Mm. But when you've gone and got a load of players from the Eredivisie, right, why are you trying to do that? That's a poor league. Surely you should be getting... Yes, fair enough, a manager comes in, they implement their style and a style that's worked at another club. But you're taking multiple players, like I said earlier in this show, seven, eight, nine players from a league that is notoriously poor. So, and you're so trying to put them into league. a league that is notoriously tough. It's so, never so going to work. I get that element. So that's where your sporting directorship comes in and says to Ten Hag, no, we know they're not good enough and there has to be a strong relationship. Secondly, where I disagree, it's we, we say Ajax style of play because we saw it being played at Ajax. Many teams play possession-based football where you play out from the back, where there is good patterns of play. And essentially, let's just boil it down to basic football. It's where you're passing and moving very quickly. And that's what we, we're very static. Like, we don't move like the ball. Girona in Spain then. Exactly. They, they, they will have a start. But again, a lot of Spanish football that is not played now, that is fast, quick, p- pace moving football, comes from Ajax. Because Johan Cruyff brought it over with him and it is spread from there. So Pep's style of football, you ask him where he gets his ideas from, it stems from the, the, the origination of total football, which Johan Cruyff brought to Barcelona. Yeah, now, what you do... No, 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 hang on, but, but let me finish. Of course, Pep's an anomaly and he's adapted it in the leagues that he's gone to. And that's what we're talking about, an adaptation of that style of football. But what we don't have is any real fast pace passing, terrible movement, we are static and there is poor shape in and out of possession so regularly. When you look at Ajax, when you look at Barca, when you look at Bayern Munich, when you look at the way Brighton from top to bottom in their club set up, they have a structure which has been implemented into every facet of their football. Now, for me, when you bring a manager in who has been at Bayern, who has been at Ajax, what you should be doing as a club is saying, right, we want a similar brand of football to that. However, what you do is you ensure between him and the sporting directors that you're bringing in are the highest possible caliber of players, not just deliver the style and the brand of football, but to have that stardust and that star quality to win you those games. So where I agree with your point around you brought in poor quality players, that's on the club and the manager collectively to get right. But in terms of the way you play football and the structure, that's about coaching. And we've seen what's happened to Ajax when they've lost a coach to the level of Ten Hag and brought somebody in who's worse. They can't win a game. Yes, they've lost players as well, and I understand that. But for me, it's... You don't want to be Ajax. It isn't about their overall system, but it's about taking a style of play and saying, right, we want to take that as a base and we want to make our own version of it. We ain't playing anything similar, anything that looks the same. We are playing Stoke City football on champagne money and it's embarrassing, bruv. It really is. Uh, King Cannon, I was back. Oh, this is good and Lee. Yo, he mate. says, this, this tiny Terry Timmy grows 10 foot when he's behind the camera. It's all talk. When we get hold of him and put it on camera, he will learn. He's a typical big mouth. Just look at him. Teeth curb, all that. This, By the way, this guy says he's 70. This 70-year-old man and his friends from the, the, bowl, the bowling green club or the golf club or whatever he does at 70 years old are going to come and put my teeth on a curb and stomp on my head. <laughs> oh, scary! Oh, Shivers, shut up, man! <laughs> do you know what? Really, just really, really funny about it. Just really, really funny. As, as, this, as this seventy-year-old man stamps on my head and breaks my neck and kills me, watch his zip go. I bet he does his zip and can't get away. The silly old sod. Oh, King Canton, oh, he's crying out here. Old, mate. It's a fool. Big up, big up to him for constantly watching the show, though. <laughs> <laughs> um. Terry, simple question. Uh, Ten Hag, uh, in or out? For me, it's out. 
There's no point to him now. Who would you get though? Like honestly, real talk. If if you lose to Newcastle tomorrow, which are, that's iffy because they're not playing well at the minute. They've got a lot of injuries as well. But if you do lose to them, and it's at Old Trafford, we already know the fans were turning a little bit at the weekend. Said, like I said, Said was there. He said a lot of fans were on him. Yeah. So if you do sack him after that result, who who comes in? Who who would you want to come into that football club? Diego Simeone. But realistically, because he ain't leaving. Okay. I would, a lot of people will say like De Zerbi, somebody like this. It's never going to work. The, the football might look great. It's never going to work at Man United. We've seen why. Look what happens. I think <sighs> Conte. Antonio. One of, two, <laughs> one, of, one, of, one of two reasons. I couldn't care less about style of football anymore. I'm just done with hoping we get a good one. Yeah, if you're going to play crap football like you're doing now, play crap football and get some results, isn't it? <laughs> well, this is the point, right? You, you either win short-term with him, we go, we're never winning long-term with anyone because we're not structured to. So you either win short-term with Conte or he upsets the Roxy Apple cut so much it exposes the Glazers more. It's win-win with Antonio Conte for me. But I've got ulterior motives. It, it, like, yeah, there's part of me that wants him to win. There's also part of me that wants him to completely expose the Glazers and he could actually win and then expose them at the end of it as well. That would be ideal. But yeah, probably Antonio Conte. Just, just because... give it to the end of the season, mate. <laughs> well, he's allowed to manage again now, to be fair. Mr. <laughs> Tybox, Mr. Tybox here says, I don't support Man United, but I am not a club hater, uh, except Spurs, obviously. Watching Man United Sunday was legit embarrassing. Bruno is not a good representation of a legendary club. Him and the manager need to be changed ASAP. Glazers or not. Things I'm right. I was embarrassed by him at the weekend, especially on the day it was surrounding Sir Bobby. Yeah. It was it was it was it was woeful. No matter which manager replaces Ten Hag, nothing will change until the Glazers leave or become serious. Look at Arsenal; uh, they became competitive when the Cronkies took the club more serious. But why did he, they take the club more serious? Because they took full ownership. Since mm. they took full ownership, because they were a major shareholder. Yeah, as soon as they got full ownership, what end of two thousand eighteen? Yeah, like eighteen. I think it was 2018. Yeah, mm. Wenger had gone. Like they got rid of Wenger, and then all of a sudden, yeah, fair enough. Emery came in, got us to a Euro Europa League final. Yeah, potted him. Went and got Arteta. Yeah, and then they, and then Josh Conkey got more invested in it. Yeah, and I think it, it's him that runs the club, not Stan. And yeah, since yeah, then, yeah. we've actually actively spent money. So, you know, is it like, yeah, cool. The Conkeys have, have, have invested our own money back into it. But it's only because they took full ownership. They weren't full owners before that. Mm. Yeah, whereas your owners are pretty much full owners. I know you have the shares floating and all of that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but those but shares have no owners, those, those share true. those shares which uh, make up about forty percent of the club. They've got zero power and zero voting rights. So they're just you just exactly. make money out of them. That's it. Uh, TT here says as controlling shareholders of the club, any sale or purchase are highly restricted. No owner. Uh, would manipulate the share price like this to make money. I have been in corporate finance lawyer for over 10 years. Let me just say, TT, there's a, I, I'll send you, if you follow me on socials, I'll send you a link to a very in-depth article that speaks, that shows you how much money they've made during the processes of hiring and sacking managers. And it is astronomical. And the, the article is not trended as much as it should. But um, as, as I say, my friend, it's it's there in black and white. It's there in black. It's there in black and white. Uh, it is far to. Uh, is it too far to? Sorry. Is it far? Sorry. Is it far to say that Ten Hag wants to be sacked? Maybe people have those conspiracy theories. I don't necessarily think they exist. I just think he's lost his head. Uh, if Ten Hag goes and the Glazers stay, go and get Carrick. Look, Carrick and McKenna, who by the way were both part of Ollie's coaching staff, who were criticised being bad coaches are doing very well in the championship right now, especially McKenna. But again, I don't want to see either of them anywhere near a Man United managerial job. One, it will ruin their careers. And two, they're not ready for it yet. So, yeah, I, I, I would, my advice to them to be steer clear of Manchester United for the foreseeable future. Uh, viewers, do us a big favor and smash like buttons. Please make sure you're subscribing to the Terrace and you have those bell notifications turned on as well. Um, hopefully Lee can hear me. I did want to ask Lee's opinion on Chelsea this weekend because, uh, you know, a lot of Chelsea fans had a lot to say last week when they drew with you, but another defeat for them. Um, what, what's your take on that? Is that just their missing firepower? Or do you think this is the manager, you know, playing 
no, two right backs on the bench didn't start one as an example. Like playing Matt, playing uh, Conor Gallagher as uh, not just in the double pivot, but making Conor Gallagher captain. Are these mistakes are hurting Chelsea, or is this just growing pains as they get better? It's the manager. It's the manager. You, you're playing Jackson up front and wearing a striker. You 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 put in what, like, what is he? What, what is he? What is he? He's a bang, he's a bang average footballer that runs around a lot. He's basically just a lanky Eddie and Kerrier. I said that when I first see him. I can't remember what game it was, one of their first games of the season. I said, Oh, look at him. He runs around a lot. He's he's got a bit of physicality. Yeah, he's got a poor first touch and he don't finish his chances. He said he's a bit of a problem. Of course he is, because he'll make a nuisance of himself. But I can't remember what game it was. It was one of their first games of the season. I think it might have been Liverpool. I think it might have been the Liverpool game. I may be wrong, but but yeah, I was like, is the lanky Eddie? Yeah, and every now and again he will score, and everyone will go, oh yeah, see, mate, he did nothing. He did absolutely nothing at Villarreal. Why is anyone surprised? Like Conor Gallagher, cool. Well, everyone's high. Oh yeah, he played well against Arsenal, and yeah, he did. But why is he even in that squad? They've done a billion quid. I don't even know half their players. That's, and the only reason I know that is a guy called Washington that was up front the other day. Yeah, it's because Gooney told me I, like, on a show we did, like, we did with Said. I was like, who's the fella up front? I don't even recognise him. I, don't, <laughs> I looked at that Chelsea team, so I set up my watch long. I went live, and that Chelsea game had about 12, 15 minutes to go. I was like, I genuinely do not recognise half of that Chelsea team. I don't know who they are. And they've done a billion quid on that. Yeah, so that goes down to the ownership. That goes down to the manager. Yeah, Poch is just a yes man. Yeah, he's got no track record of being successful anywhere other than PSG. And let's be real, if you can't win a PSG, you're getting sacked anyway. And even if you do win, you're probably still getting sacked. All right, so cool. Go to PSG, nick a couple of trophies. Everywhere else he's been, like, he's living off of the back of Southampton and Spurs, mate, and he did nothing at either of them apart from get pretty football. Now, let's just be real with it. Poch bottled every big co competition he was in, every final, every semi-final. Yeah, when he was at Southampton, they sold every decent player they had. So why why the hype around Poch? Yeah, he's he's got he's got Reese James and Gusto, I think it was on the bench at the weekend. He's playing Enzo in a in um in a different position to where he should be playing. He's playing further forward. Why? Oh, but he's created the most chances and what? You can't score him, mate. Yeah, if you're gonna play Connor Gallagher, you play him at the 10 and Enzo next to Caicedo. It's basic basics. Yeah, then you're playing big up Johnny Minerals. Chelsea, Chelsea, front by Chelsea, right? But then you're he's so, he's so Chelsea. I heard him talk the other day. I'm like, I bet his farts smell like jelly deals, bruv. Do you know what I mean? He's, <laughs> he's so cockney. It's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> hey, man, man's down the Imperial pub, bruv. Like, do you know what I mean? 20 quid a pint and that. Yeah, but but yeah, it's a different Chelsea, man. And it's 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 funny, but it's it's not at the same time. It's gone past the funny stage, isn't it? Yeah, a bit like Man United. It's gone past the funny stage. Like, it's like, yeah, we're, we're bored of laughing at you two now. I feel a bit sorry for you in a way, but but at the same time, it's that 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 club right there, right? Since Todd Bowley and Egbali have come into that football club, you could literally, you would if you had said the day that Abramovich got out of that football club and got forced out of that football club, if you had said everything that's happened along the way and predicted what's going to happen, you would have you would have been carted off by the men in white coats, mate. Mm. Yeah, and you look at it now, and you're just like, how to ruin a football club in 12 to 15 months? You can make a film out of that. Yeah, and it can turn it around. They can turn it around, though. Do you think they can turn it around, though, Lee? In terms of if they went out in January and got Victor Osherman or, or Ivan Tony, well, why and... would he go there? Because I why think if you he... of them two, I know Osherman's heroes, Drogba, and all that. But come on, mate. Yeah, why would Ivan Tony go and waste his career there? Yeah, Ivan Tony will be the main man there. And we've seen him on, I think it was Diary of a CEO, with uh, Stuart Bartley, I think his name was, saying, I want to be the main man at a club. Well, he can be the main man at Arsenal. He can be the main man at Tottenham. And they're in better positions right now, structurally, yeah, on the pitch, managerially, yeah, squad-wise, settled squad, more experienced squads than Chelsea will will be if he goes there. And he'll just be another, another number in a team that's going to have all eyes on him failing. Yeah, and I don't think Ivan Tony would fail necessarily at Chelsea, but he ain't going to hit the numbers he'd hit at Tottenham or Arsenal. Yeah, even Man United, yeah, because Chelsea, yes, they create a lot of chances and they ain't got anyone to put them in the back of the net. But ultimately, it's not just the chances they're creating. They are an absolute mess, Terry, yeah? They've done over a billion quid and they ain't got a striker or a goalkeeper. 
He had a goalkeeper's bang average. He was third, third choice at Brighton. And their striker was a bang average winger from Villarreal. Like, make that make sense. Then they've got a kid called Washington. What? Matson and all that. Like, I don't even know who these people are. No disrespect to them. Yeah, I don't know who you are. Like, nobody knows who these people are. And it's like, you've done a billion quid and your best player is Thiago Silva. And he's 39. Yeah, and even he looks out of his depth. Why? Because the rest of them are bang average. Reese James can't stay fit. Top player when he is. Enzo's quality. Yeah, but the best two players in that team for me are Enzo. Yeah, and, and the centre-back, Thiago. Other than that, I'm looking at their squad going, boy, I wouldn't take any of you lot, really. Mudrick's scored against us. He's going to live off of that for the rest of the season. Yeah, Sterling's absolutely flopped since he's gone there. Showed sparks this season. Yeah, and it was sparkles, but not really. Like, he's not really done it. The, the boy they bought from City, Palmer, he's done all right since he's gone there. Like, and he's walked into the club and he's been one of their better players this season. Like, I, I just look at it and I just think, wow. I think they can buy their way out of it but then how much more can they keep spending before it comes to a well actually on our books we've lost 800 million so do you, do you yeah, feel like, like they've wa- do you think they've wasted the best part of the billion pound they've spent then because damn right, it, damn really? right yeah. terry if you're going to go and spend that much money in such a short space of time you go and get harry kane you go and get madison you go and get center backs that are decent and Lissandro martinez for example he was available why didn't they go and get him? Yeah, why didn't they go and get him? Why didn't they go and get, I don't know, so, um, the, why didn't they bring Gai back from Palace? Like, they could have brought him back. I'm sure they've got some clause somewhere to get him back, maybe. Why didn't they go and get Tamori back? Yeah, why don't they go and buy Anderson from Palace? He's a decent centre-back. Why didn't they, why weren't they in for Van der Ven? He's looked half-decent since he's got it. Yeah, there was decent centre-backs, but they've got this policy, yeah, the under-25s or something. And, and, Mate, I'm sorry. Yeah, the only ever youth project I've ever seen that's really done anything in the Premier League history was the class of 92. Let's just be real with it. The youth project <laughs> Arsenal had when Thierry Henry left, which weren't dressed up as a youth project. Our squad was younger the season Thierry Henry left. We were in a title challenge for about 26 games, fell away. The following season, Champions League semi. That squad was younger than our squad last season, mm. right? We, yes, we've seen Tottenham when they were in a title challenge against Conte's Chelsea. Their squad was younger than the team we had last season. None of these teams won anything, Terry. What makes Chelsea's ownership and board level think that by going and buying all of these youngsters, they're suddenly going to miraculously overtake Pep Guardiola's Man City, Klopp's Liverpool, even get above Arsenal? Yeah, and currently right now, they're not getting even in the top half, mate. They're not even getting above Villa this season if they carry on. And then we've been there for five minutes. The class of 92 wasn't even a youth project, though, per se. Well, no, you had, in, you had Bruce and all of that lot there. Yeah, but they, if you actually look at the core of that team, it, you, had, you, had those five, you, had, you had those five, six youngsters that were in the squad. Of The squads are smaller back then, like 18 or so people. But the other 12, 13 members of that squad were all mid-20s and above and experienced. And I, I do get where you're coming from. Look, I, I do think it's recoverable. I just think what they need to go out and do over January in the summer is maybe spend big, but they have to go out and add, say, three or four players who are 25, 26 years of age, experience, maybe have won things or of a high quality to come in and give a, a, a deeper spine to this team because they're young and it's hard to... Like I said it last season. If there was five more games to play last year, they would have gone down because oh, those... Sorry. Those players, one, are not experienced, and two, when you buy players who have been at big clubs or, you know you know, of the level of player they're buying, they're not used to being in these dog fights at the bottom of the hardest league in the world. It's hard for them. It's a different kind of <laughs> mindset, if that makes sense. And I think like watching what Chelsea do, I, look, I've said it with Poch. I think, he'll, I think he'll get them playing really good football and some of their movements, some of their approach play is really good. The one thing I've always doubted about him is his ability when the going gets tough to get over the line. I, I've said it, I, I, he has yet to do anything to change my mind, but I still yeah. think, I still think Chelsea's new owners are going to get it right. I still think they will create, whether it's with Potts or somebody else, I still think they will create a very dangerous and a very potent Chelsea team at some point in the near future. I understand what they're doing. I just think they, the, the one thing I'm now looking at, I'm thinking, yeah, they really need to add some more experience to this team for the young players to learn off and be guided by. Because at the moment... They need somebody that's coming the your end captain. of their careers, the last two years or three years of their career. Players that have done it at a decent level, won trophies, you know, that are touching 29, 30, got a couple of years left. 
Yeah, and as for that geezer in the chat, the CFC Reaper, you can tell he just don't watch us. Bro, I know more about Chelsea than half of your fan base, mate. <laughs> yeah. Like, I worked with Tony Rolf, SW6 Chelsea, mate, for 15 years. Yeah, I was in the car when Abramovich bought the club, the same car he was driving. Yeah, I know way more about Chelsea than most of your fan base. You probably weren't even born back then, mate. Yeah, so what are you waffling about? Yeah, it's like, what are you waffling about? Like, honestly, these Chelsea fans crack me up. You slag their club off, and I ain't even slagging their club off. I'm giving an honest assessment on where they're at. Yeah, and they will start crying. Bro, your team have struggled to get in the top half of the table since Abramovich left. Yeah, what are you sitting there looking at? Oh, it's a project. Where's the ruthlessness you lot had under Abramovich? Yeah, now it's a project, phases and dogs. Yeah, you'll have a dog down there next. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Like, like, what's cat, happened to their fan base? They're all accepting it. Like, not all of them, but a lot of them. Yeah, the younger ones online, they're accepting it. The older lot are fuming. Johnny Minerals ain't. I, jo I, jo I did a show with Johnny the other day, man. Big up to Johnny Minerals, yeah? Like, at the end of the day, Right. They are way, way away from the club they were under Abramovich. Hiring and firing, staying at the top. Yes, they hadn't won a league for the last few years under Abramovich. But now they're all sitting there online. Most of their content creators are just sex, uh, accepting, oh, well, it is what it is, where it gets to 40 points. And they're all laughing about it. What are you waffling about? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Your club's going down to Swanee, mate, and you'll sit there laughing. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. Uh, this here says... Uh... Uh, Terry, please link the article. The shares control. Yeah, I'll um, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 dig it out. I'll put it into the chat in a minute, mate. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. I just didn't want to go and search right now. Uh, I'll get that done for you, my bro. Thank you. Uh, Ten hugs needs to be sacked. Uh, he Terry, he is an embarrassment to to the nation. Well, he's not English, but I hear you. Uh, you as we know, know the Glazers so negative. Glazers have all the money and back Ten Hag spent four hundred million. We are shit. I want to change with you, Lee. We want to get changed with you, Lee. What's you want to get changed with you. By the way, yeah. there's, there's a, there's I a Chelsea. Challenge you, Lee. Bro, and again, I know more about Man United than you, mate. Go away. You're a weirdo. Like, honestly, Lee. stalking Terry at work and all of that. You know, no, no, I ain't about that. Like, yeah. Bro, like, bro, there's, a, there's a Chelsea fan, by the way, who's respectful. He's not a, he's not a weirdo. Um, he, he wants to come on and challenge you in your Chelsea opinion. He's a good guy. Like, yeah, is that cool, man, yeah? Come on, listen. At the end of the day, yeah, get him on, get him on. Listen, I ain't got no animosity against Chelsea. I've actually sat mm. here on many shows over the years, yeah, not just my channel, but other channels as well, and said, we should be rivals with Chelsea because of what they achieved in 20 years. Yeah. yeah that's, they did everything we smashed the stadium down for, right? But now all of a sudden, they're in the doldrums, they're down in the mid-table for the last 12 months, and because you then call that out, and say, well, they're a bit of a shambles. They've done this, this, and this. Yeah, all of a sudden, everyone wants a challenge. Bro, your club's in the gutter. <laughs> like, come on. Mm. If he wants to come on, get him on. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying, he's not one of these, he's not like a weird clout chaser. Good guy, Don. He's a Chelsea fan, comes on the show quite a bit. Uh, as good as we are, um, I'm still Cronkies out. I refuse to give my money. That's from Oliver, top man. Ronaldo warned Man United about Eric Ten Hag. CR7 was right. Uh, do you think the issue in the in the Premier League lack of divers lack of divers play style? <laughs> I don't know do what that means. The Premier League lack of divers play style. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, my bro. But thanks for the super chat. This is an interesting one, Lee. Can can you do an expression style intro? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know if anyone can do that. No, nah, no, nah, nah, he's unique, bro. Big up X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone who can do that. But um, uh, X is, he, he's too, um, he's too unique. Uh, speaking of Arsenal, though, that per Super Chat, big win for you guys at the weekend. Still unbeaten in the Premier League. Uh, first half a little sketchy, but second half absolutely reigned supreme. And Eddie and Ketia, well, what I have to say, was a phenomenal hat trick from him. Yep, first half rubbish. Um, we're going to see that a lot with teams that are not serious about anything, like Sheffield United. They're going to go down with literally hardly any points. They're not serious at all. They sold their best two players in the summer, one to Burnley. And um, they literally came to just park every single player behind the ball. And we have to find a way against, against that. And in, in the first half, we really struggled. But... Nice ball from Declan Rice through the uh, through the guy's legs. Yeah, great first touch from Eddie. 
finished it one nil up at half time cool and in the second half i was like right let's go and get the second and then as soon as we get the second this lot of fold yeah it gets a second another great instinctive finish and then the third oh my days what a goal he wouldn't have took that if he hadn't have scored the first two that's his first goal outside the box since he's been a pro player <laughs> like it's his first arsenal goal outside the box anyway i don't know maybe at least he scored one but i'm not sure he has but first that trick first um first goal outside the box and now all of a sudden he's um he's better than ivan tony we don't need ivan tony in it so yeah it's all good mate like he's got a better strike rate than ivan tony apparently so yeah and now we don't need ivan good one that's his 37th goal in seven years <laughs> yeah <laughs> And two of them were on his debut that I was at against Norwich. So, but no, all in all, good performance. Um, the only downside for me, listen, the goalkeeper didn't have a single shot to save. They were poor. I think they only had two shots in total, none on target. The defence and the and the goalkeeper could have had a cigar on the go. Light work. Um, Declan Rice played well. Um, Saka was, mm, he was better, but he weren't the, the heights we know he can get to. Um, Martinelli, I thought he played all right. I was shocked he got subbed before Saka. Um, no Odegaard. Obviously, he was getting ready for Halloween weekend. Um, you know, it's what it is. Ghost Guard and all of that. And uh, Oddy Ghost. And um, I noticed he turned up, though. He turned up for the Ballon d'Or Awards. I noticed he turned up for that. Funny enough, he finished 28th out of 30. Unlucky. Um, but there we go. I think Saka finished above him. <laughs> Unlucky. Still good, Still good, though, for 28th in the world. Yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, you're not number one. My goat is. We're going to come to that in a bit. Um, but no, honestly, it was a good performance. That was our best second. Well, that was our best. I think that was our best overall performance of the season. The reason I say it was our best overall performance of the season, even though the first half was crap, they parked the bus. Whereas the other two performances I think we've done well in, um, PSV and Bournemouth, they actually came out and tried to play football. Yeah, and we just popped them. Yeah, whereas we had to break them down. And it, it weren't easy at times. So... Yeah, after we got that second goal, they were, they just fell apart, mate. And then Vieira coming off the bench, won the pen, scored the pen. Um, and then Tommy Asu, he's played well the last three or four appearances. So, so yeah, big up to him, man. He, he deserved his goal. El Neni's setting it up as well, flick on header. So, yeah, we move on. We've got um, we've got West Ham um, on Wednesday, tomorrow. And then we've got yeah. Newcastle away. So, it's an Eddie and Ketia, well done. You scored a hat-trick. Yeah, I wasn't disappointed he got the armband after that when Saka went off, like whereas previously I have. But if you're ever going to get given the armband, do it on a day you scored a hat trick, isn't it? But that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Will it count for anything? We'll see. Will Eddie kick on? Well, he never has done after scoring goals. So we'll see, isn't it? He scored two against Chelsea and never kicked on. We finished fifth that season after being fourth. So we'll see. We'll see. But Jesus is um he's now out. He's out for at least a few weeks, apparently. Um, Odegaard depends whether he plays on Wednesday. Um, obviously, he was fit enough to go to the Ballon d'Or in France. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Is it any coincidence, Tell, we, we scored the most goals without him in the team this season? Like five goals, that was our biggest win this season. He didn't play. Well, 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 I thought, again, watching it, I thought it was the right thing for the manager to do. I don't think he's, you know, and I think one thing I'd say about Arteta, he's done it on a few occasions, like there's been more rotation this year. He's dropped people. And I still think there needs to be more of it when people, I think Odegaard maybe should have been dropped a few games sooner, but it's good to see him actually do that. Because I think last year, he just run too many of your players into the ground, you know? Oh, well, yeah, true. But at the same time, uh, he came out after the game, um, the manager, and said, oh, he's been playing with an injury. All I read into that is either, number one, you're lying. Yeah, or number two, you've played a player through injury because you don't trust your bench. <laughs> like, so, like, come on, where do we go with this? Yeah, are we going to beat Man City to a title? Probably not. Yeah, so great 5-0 win, cool. Yeah, go and win the cup. Go and win some cups because we ain't winning the title. So I want to see a good performance against West Ham tomorrow. The, uh, the League Cup, the same League Cup, by the way, that's beneath a club like Arsenal. So, yeah, for me, go and win the League Cup. And um, if we don't win the league, at least we won something, innit? There we go. Well, listen, you've got to take it seriously because you, you, no one knows how the season's going to unfold. I think being in more competitions is important for, for big squads like everybody has got. And winning trophies is... I mean, I did get into an argument with Spurs fan in group chat yesterday. It's all, all friendly stuff. Digging in at Ten Hag, obviously loves Big Ange. And I just said, well... You better wrote Big Ange win more, wins more trophies in England than Ten Hag because 
It would be embarrassing for a flop manager with terrible talent ideas, a bad coach to win more than your guy. And he said that this was the words from this is so spursy. He said, well, winning trophies doesn't make your CV better as a manager. (laughs) I know. And I'm just sort of like, I'm like, bro, that's literally their job is to win trophies. So yeah, like you've got to try and win as many as possible. And the more everyone wants the big ones more than they want the league cup. But you know, when it comes to like, toting them up against each other. If you can say, yeah, look, three league titles, two Champions Leagues, three FA Cups, two League Cups, that's just, you add all those domestic trophies in, it, it helps. It helps It helps with the arguments so, there. No, he so did. that was a Spurs fan that said that, yeah? Yeah, I'm actually going to quote him correctly. I'm that gonna actually quote kind him. of makes sense because they don't win anything anyway. They're just happy seeing pretty football. So when you when you go down the uh, the GOAT status of managers, do you go, do you, do you put managers in there that are one nothing? What about goats players? Do you put players in there that won nothing? This, this, this is what was said, right? So I said, like, uh, you better hope Big And wins more trophies uh, than this bum with no talent ID, lads. Obviously, just joking. He <sighs> said, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then I love this guy. He said, uh, Sergio, uh, uh, one day Ramos won a Carabao Cup. It don't mean much if it doesn't laugh. I said, so you don't count that trophy. Fair enough. He said, it counts, of course. Uh, doesn't make his managerial credentials any better, though. Um, it, makes, just, it makes him a better Tottenham manager than Jose Mourinho. Yeah, so I just, Conte, I just, Harry yeah, I just said, like, trophies don't make a manager's CV better. It, it's it's great. Like I kind of get if it ends badly, still, then it's not great for you. But if Big Ange plays this well for five years and wins nothing and leaves after winning nothing, and Ten Hag gets sacked tomorrow, Ten Hag did better in England. As far as I'm concerned, he did better. He won a trophy. Like the cold hard light of day. You don't remember those five years, really. Again, but maybe Spurs fans do. Like, I know that's not all Tottenham fans. By the way, I love, I love, I love the boys in the group chat. It was a bit of fun. Uh, viewers, yeah, that, please. That, that's Tottenham. Bring that's on. why I don't put them as rivals, Terry, because they ain't interested in winning, which is why their ownership pulls their pants down every year. Yeah, we've got our Tottenham back. Mate, they've got three points more than they had this time last year. Look how happy they were because they got a better mm. style of football. Yeah, if they don't win anything this year, oh, it doesn't matter. We played better football. And what? You sacked a manager, sacked fourth, but you ended up finishing eighth. Now you've got a better style of football. whoopee do. Yeah, you shouldn't have finished eighth anyway. Let's just be real with it. Yeah, now they're top of the league unbeaten. They're playing half decent. But are they really that good? They scrambled past um, Liverpool, yeah, with a dodgy goal, yeah, which weren't their fault. Obviously, that was VAR. They scrambled past Sheffield, um, was it Sheffield United or Brentford? Sheffield United, wasn't it? Yeah, Sheffield United. Yeah, 2-1. Yeah, they ain't been that good. They ain't been that good. Yeah, they've played some good games. Of course they have. They scored five against Burnley, but they conceded two in that game. Yeah, like if we hadn't have let Jorginho play that game, we might have won that game against them. Who knows? They haven't been that great, but because they're like against Luton, Luton had some good chances against them, had a goal disallowed. But they're not that good, but the style of football is a little bit better and they've got a manager they can believe in, which is cool. But ultimately, if they don't win anything, I, I, yeah. And look, for me, and my comment was just a very like I was just messing around, basically, like being a bit salty with well, you better hope your manager wins more than this bum, which is which to a degree is true, right? At the end of the day, like if you're giving it, if you're giving it the big, and you better hope you win more than the guy you say is a failure. But just when it boils down to that, it just I love the guy. But when he just said <laughs> uh, like uh, tro- trophies don't make your uh, managerial credentials better, I'm like. That literally is winning the trophies is is one of the main points. Like style of football comes into it. But if your style of football is beautiful, but you win nothing, like Kevin Keegan's Newcastle played sublime football, but they didn't win anything. So it, it, does anybody remember barring Newcastle fans? That, well, my generation remember that Newcastle team, but no one remembers them like Man United and yeah, Liverpool. I mean, only remember it because Kevin Keegan said, "I'd love it if we beat them," and then he never beat them. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. He's not remembered. City fan in the chat saying Spurs are better than Arsenal. Cool. We'll win a trophy then. Yeah, I know you're a City fan. Yeah, but if you're saying Spurs are better than Arsenal, cool. I expect them to win the league then. Or I expect them to win the FA Cup then. Yeah, league position for me is irrelevant unless you win the league. Like, it's irrelevant. Yeah, go and win something. If they're, if they're better than Arsenal, then I expect them to win the league then. Because Arsenal were apparently in a title race, so they should win the league then, isn't it? Or go and win the cup. They're already out of one cup. Yeah, they ain't gonna go and win the FA Cup because it'll bring in about six million quid. Qualifying for Champions League will bring in about 66 million quid. We know we all know what Tottenham are. Yeah, but because they've got a nice brand of football and their ownership sat there 
in a fan forum and even said, this is how this is how shameless their owner is. He sat there after they got knocked out of the League Cup two days earlier and went, we've got our Tottenham back Tottenham fans. And they went, yay, and clapped. You just got knocked out of the League Cup to Fulham. Come do on, know, man. Do you know what is funny about it? I, I'm, I've got to call you out here, Ole, and I'm sorry. But how dare you speak about your club Tottenham like this? I thought you were a Tottenham fan. That's the irony. When you get called a Tottenham fan just because you've got high standards for Arsenal, I know we have a bit of banter with it, but the way you speak about Tottenham, it's ironically, some Arsenal fans, like uh, I've had like come to go, why doesn't he really call Spurs out? I went, bruv, you're missing the beauty of the insult that Lee Gunner has for Tottenham. He thinks they're so shit, he, he barely pays them any attention. That's more insulting than calling them names. That deep it for a minute. And they're like, oh, yeah, I get you. Like, yeah, Lee, definitely, definitely not a Spurs fan. Super Chats here. And, and uh, Don's coming on in a second. This says, don't necessarily agree with uh, with that Spurs fan, but is a bum who won a league uh, with some Estonian team better than a manager in the Premier League who hasn't? But that's well, not yeah, what we're talking about. trophy. Well, yeah, you can argue that, but you we're not... Win it. Uh, can I just say this as well? So, on, when on. people dismiss all these other leagues around the world, you still have to win it. Like, when people dismiss the Scottish League, Still got to go and do it. Like you still got to go and do the treble if you're Celtic. No, you still no, and do ten in a row if you're Celtic because you got to beat Rangers. Yeah, still, yeah. Right? I mean, you, ten, you can't take away from Ten Hag what he did in the era division. You can't. But but if we just boil this down, though, I was talking in the group chat about what you do in England. So it, I'm not talking about Ten Hag having won two era divisions with an Ajax team that I definitely think would have beaten the his pomp would have beaten um, Big Andy's Celtic team. That's an irrelevant part of the conversation. It's just what you do in England and. A manager that's won a trophy in England has had a better career in England than a manager that hasn't won a trophy. When you're managing the top teams, when you're man again, Spurs are no underdogs. Like people forget this in the last two years. So since Ten Hag's been spending Man United's money, Spurs have only spent twenty million pound less than us. They are not paupers. They are not. An, uh, no one in the traditional top six is an underdog. We are all owned by billionaires with huge... You know, Spurs... In the Premier League era, Spurs, have Spurs spent, is income. I think Spurs may have spent on par with Arsenal. And I think the they spent Spurs, around... And Spurs' is income now as a club, Spurs' is income as a club is higher now. Than Arsenal's, so they're it's no wonder. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this bullshit. That's listen. This is. I mean, this. This is a respectful comment. I don't want to hear this bullshit that Spurs are some small club financially and can't compete. They got money, bro. They are rich. Uh, Lee, uh, legend Lee, talking sense about Spurs uh, not being great uh, for forty years. To be fair, Thanks. but want to want to make. Um, but don't want to make Sav cry again. Nah, Sav didn't cry. It'll be on with me tomorrow. Sav's a good lad. Uh, this says Eddie Nketiah scores less than a virgin. He wouldn't start as a striker for Everton. Arsenal need better. He couldn't even start for Leeds in the championship, mate. 19 games, five goals. Well done, bench player. <laughs> and, and is already a better manager than him anyway. Fair enough. Uh, Lee started well, but still found room to criticise something about Arsenal. Criticism of Odegaard is a bit of a reach. Well, it ain't really, is it? It ain't really. He's been a professional footballer in first team football for this is his 10th season he's won one trophy and the most goals he's ever scored was last season that led to nothing there we go like i said the bar's on the floor eddie deserves his flowers for the performance and the hat trick but he is not the striker to win us the title move him on in january is yeah, what george says he's here put another five mil on his price tag isn't he that's, that's, that, that's what he's done good for you there yeah uh please predict um We'll do that one later. We'll come back to that one. Lee, you said, sorry, Lee, you see the video of X and the best eight in the Premier League. No, he, oh, 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 no, he did, a, he did a video with Basuma. Yeah, I haven't seen it oh, yet. Oh, no, yeah, 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 I did see that with Basuma. Yeah, yeah I haven't I watched it yet, but I see him do it. Uh, Spurs are the most unsuccessful team in England. Pound for pound, you're probably right. With how much money they've spent in the last 30 years to win two trophies. I think they've spent 300 million less than Man United in the Premier League era. Yeah, so that's so when so whenever I hear a Spurs fan say, "Yeah, but you should do more better than us, Terry. You spend more." It's like, okay, three hundred million less in thirty years. I'm sorry, you can't be talking about being poorer than us, bruv. And imagine that it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, we're gonna bring Don out now to have his say. Uh, I know he wants to talk a li li little bit, little bit, a little bit of Chelsea here. We're gonna yes, add please. 
Bravo and Chelsea. It, Come on, Chelsea, Chelsea. <laughs> you need to change that song, bro. That song's dead. That's the deadest song in the planet. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Hey, nah, man. Lee, listen. Hey, I, lo- I love your takes, bro, at times, yeah, but listen. I can't agree with that centre back thing, man. Like you said, that we we need centre backs, Martinez, and all of these guys. And you said about Man United needing Tony more than us. I, I've got to disagree with that as well, bro. Like we're creating more chances than, than Man United right now, and we're playing better football than United right now. So I don't understand how you can't look at what's going on with Chelsea right now and say that Tony's not 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 a big requirement. Like I can think of so many games this season already, bro, where if Tony's got had the chances that we've missed, he's burying them, bro. Even in Cuckoo. Do you know what I'm saying? He's burying these chances, bro. We're not we're not playing as badly as what people think. I know we, we haven't been picking up results, bro. I'm not defending them for that because these lot are professional footballers. You lot train every day, yeah? Some of these chances that they're missing is just unbelievable for some of these players to be missing, right? But end of the day, we can't ignore the fact that we're creating good chances now, especially since Palmer came into the team. So Tony would definitely go a long way, bro, and us getting top four, top five. Like, let's not act as if to get in the top four, top five, you need to be near perfect. You need to be perfect to, to you know near perfect to win the league. But again, the top four, top five, season after season, we always go on about our oh, um, this team wants to give it to that team, and that team wants to give it to that team. Do you know what I mean? And to be honest with you, we've got a very deep squad, bro. Very deep squad. We've got a lot of injuries, and Terry will vouch. I haven't complained about injuries once because of the amount of players that we've got. True. So I'll be real with you, bro. Like when we get if we if we bring in a Tony into this team, it will definitely go a long way in kicking on. Um, how we want to how we want to kick on going forward. I agree with you. We definitely need a lot of experience in this team. I wanted experience in the summer, but this is the reality of the situation, bro. We're working with young players, but they're young players of a lot of quality. But I feel like a, a lot of rivals like you feel that speak like everything was all rosy when Roman was here. It wasn't, bro. It was not rosy when Roman was here, bro. From 2017 onwards, we had some shocking recruitment, yeah? Getting in players like Sol instead of going in for too many, right? Let me just read some of the, the, the senior experienced players that we brought in at Chelsea under Roman from 2017 onwards. Let me just name you a few of them. Zappa Costa, yeah? We brought in Zappa Costa. We brought in Emerson, Drinkwater, Bakayoko, Barkley, yeah? Ziyech, yeah, that didn't work. Lukaku, Havertz, right? Morata, okay? Pulisic, I mean, he was good at the time, but again, he flopped. Do you know what I mean? When I'm looking at this list right now, there's only a few players that actually made it here at Chelsea. Kepa, poor. Mendy, one world-class season, poor. So let's not act as if everything was rosy when Roman was here, because he made a lot of mistakes, bro. The last season before he got sanctioned, that was the longest time he went as, as, as our owner without winning the league. We literally lost five finals in a row at Wembley, by the way. Five we've lost at Wembley in a row. And that's under Roman. So I, I, as much as these new owners have, have made mistakes, I believe they will rectify them, especially in January by getting a striker. But I don't like this notion that rivals think everything was rosy at Chelsea when Roman was here in the last few years, because it really wasn't. It really wasn't. We, we've, we no, found we ways still, of... You were still of, nicking Champions League. She was still... Oh, bro, come on now. You didn't expect, on. Did you expect us to win that Champions League, bro? I don't that think over the cracks. To win the Champions that, League. But my, my point paper. is, yes, come you on. didn't win a league for so long. Right, you didn't win a league for so long, and you still haven't. What 2017 Conte, yeah, yeah. Then that's the last time we actually challenged the league. in the cup final in that year. Yeah, big right. up. I was there. Yeah, I, was, I witnessed it firsthand. I, you were crap that day. Big up Per Mertesacker. Was yeah, 2020. You then lose to us in the cup final, but you got to the, then you lose to Leicester in the cup final. You win the Champions League. Lost to Liverpool as well. Lost to Liverpool as well. Right, but you're getting there. You're still getting to them. Yeah, I don't see how you're getting anywhere near a cup final anytime soon. Whereas you were still getting there under that ownership. That ownership, mm-hmm. obviously, it went sideways, wonky, reasons why, whatever. Yeah, but you've got in this cowboy and his pal, right? And you've gone way away from anything that resembles Chelsea over the last two decades, yeah? A Chelsea team that were ruthless. The helicopter rocks up at Cobham. You know, the manager's gone. He could be gone at half yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Ancelotti sacked in the tunnel and all of that. Yeah, and it's like you were ruthless with your, with your squad. And even though you had players that didn't really do it, well, Morata's still sourcing at Atleti, bro. I watched their game the other night. He was absolutely balling the other night. Yeah, he was He's crap for us. Season. It was crap for yeah. us. The man of one on one, the yeah. man of big chances we created for that guy, he would miss week after week. Yeah. He was crap at Chelsea. I, I agree. Yeah, Lukaku was crap for you lot. Yeah, but Lukaku's a, a slightly different case because that guy's got a, he's what, won one trophy in England, yeah, in his entire English football career. Yeah, and he's been transferred to Man United, to Chelsea, he had Everton, West Brom. He's won one trophy. His goal output is one in two pretty much at every club. 
Yeah, but the fact is, he's won one trophy, and that was 2012, I think, FA Cup. Yeah, I think he won the 2012 FA Cup that year. Yeah, I think it was 2012, right? But yeah, it was. It was when when Di Matteo won you the um, the, the Champions League and then won the won the cup, right? But my point is, Chelsea always did above and beyond because you'd have a striker, he'd do crap for a year, you'd get him out of the football club. But now what you've done is you've put a load of players on eight year contracts, seven year contracts, and you're saying you've got a wealth of talent in your squad, bro. I don't see the talent in your squad. Who's talented in your squad? Reese James. You're telling, you're telling me you don't rate Caicedo then, yeah? No, oh, I love Caicedo, right? I, no, wait, wait. Let's go through your squad real oh. quick. Your goalkeeper's trash, right? Your goalkeeper's trash. Let's just have that right. He is trash, mm -hmm. right? You're right. He's actually been good this season, though, Lee. He, he's he's safe he's percentage. Right. Up here, he's bro. not the biggest he's problem safe. in your club right now, but let's be real. Yeah. If you want to win anything, he ain't he's not there. levels. He's not levels. I agree with he's that. But to say, to say he's been trash this season uh, is a bit Gusto's of a strange. decent. Yeah, Gusto's decent. Reese James is quality, but he's never he's fit. better than any of your right backs. What, what Reese James? Gusto. Gusto and Reese James. He starts for well, us. We haven't seen a bigger sample size for Gusto to, to have that because Ben White was class last season. Yeah, yeah but he locked up Martinelli. Martinelli was class last season. What happened game, bridge? It's one game. It doesn't, bro. I've watched him all bro, season. I've seen Tommy lock up Mohamed Salah at Anfield. Like, yeah, but on. I'm saying I'm saying I've watched Gusto all season. He's been locking locking wingers up, bro. And he and he locked Mattel well, Martin. Why didn't he play the well. That's Poch. That's not on me, bro. Well, there we go. Poch. So this is my <laughs> point. It comes back to yeah, decision making at your football club. Yeah, and that comes back to managers. Player personnel as well, right? You've so who was Donny Ray? Who was Donny Ray? Who was Donny Ray? Go on, go through the right, squad. No, no, no. Let's go for the ones I do rate because it's a smaller sample, I yeah, a smaller on. window than the ones that I do rate. Right? Gusto looks decent, but again, so did Kukurea when he first went to Chelsea. He looked all right, and then he fell off a cliff. Yeah, right. Reese James is quality. We all know he's a top, top right back, but a guy is mm. made of glass. Yeah, so I can't put him in there. I rate him, but I can't put him in there because he ain't reliable, bro. Right? So. I'd take Gusto over Reese James based on availability. Yeah, but in terms of quality and in terms of um, ability, Reese James clear, right? Thiago Silva, quality, right? But he's nearly 40. He's, he's two years younger than me. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> right? Two years younger than me, yeah? Um, any other centre-back you have, I don't particularly rate. Yeah, I'll be real. I don't rate that. You don't rate, you don't rate Badia Shield? Badia Shield, no way. That, 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 guy, that guy's all right, but again... Is he that great? There's other. I could name five, six centre backs in the league that are clear by a country mile, bro. So leave it, Gabby. Don't clear of it. When, but when Badia Shaw, when Badia Shaw came into the, came into our team last year, he was solid, bro. Like, yeah, he but was everyone solid. comes into your team and looks good straight away, and then they fall off a cliff. There's a reason for that, which is my point. Yeah, originally. but Badia Shaw hasn't fallen off of a cliff, though. You can't you can't use that logic, bro. He hasn't fallen off a cliff. He's, he's been good, and he got injured. Then he got injured. Exactly. So why Levi? Le Levi, I heard, I heard, I heard what Terry was saying to you about Levi Cole as well. You were judging him here yeah, as a left back when he's not a left back. That's on Pochettino for putting him there, playing him out of positions, right? No, I'm you judging, judging him based him. on what I've witnessed over the time he's played in the Premier League, bro. And was so, so really why, why did why did Jurgen Klopp want him then? Why did the title title competing team want him then? If he's so crap, bro, listen, Jurgen Klopp had James Milner running around at right back when he was 37. Like, let's let's not go down that route. He had and Naby Keita in his team. Yeah, he had Minamino, Sky, and Sitters left, right, and center. Yeah, come on. Nah, yeah, Le like, Levi's a good player, bro. Levi's a good player. Levi's man. A, he's an average center back. Yeah, that's been hyped up into oblivion because he's come. He has been hyped academy. up. I agree. Yeah, he's he come through the academy up. and he's been given John Terry's shirt number, which in itself is a disgrace. Yeah, which shows how far your club's fallen that you've given a youth team player, yeah, in the hope that he comes good, John Terry's number to get everyone emotionally connected to the guy. Yeah, when the reality is he's nowhere near the levels of maybe five, six, seven other youngsters in the league around the similar age. Yeah, right whether they're English or not. Yeah, Saliba's miles clear of him. Gabriel Magalhaes is clear of him. Lissandro's clear of him. Like, come on, let's be real with this, yeah? Right, now you go to the left-backs. Chilwell, half decent, I'd say. I think he's a decent player, yeah? But I don't think he's levels, yeah? And he's always injured. Kukurea looked great at Brighton, but so does everyone at Brighton. They then come to other clubs and they don't do it. Let's be real, yeah? So he's done nothing, really. He played very well against Bukayo Saka the other day, by the way. Yeah, Oh, one second, my door's going. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi for Lee. Um, let's do some super chats while, while, yeah. while we're waiting on this here. This is Chelsea fans keep arguing all their players get into top four uh, league size, yet they sit in 11th. The delusion is crazy. Bro, Wait, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care, I don't care about... I don't trick care about trick. Oh, it's, early, it's early, later where you are, isn't it? It's finally five o'clock. Yeah? Six o'clock, it starts. One yeah. thing about me, Terry, yeah, I don't care about no combined 11s, yeah? I, I believe in this squad that we're trying to build right now. We just we need a striker. 
it's a must. That's a must, right? Yeah, but that's no one your biggest it. problem. If you go into your midfield, yeah, right, your midfield, you've got Conor Gallagher mm. running around, yeah, doing up captain armband, right, playing out of position, because for me, he's a 10, not an 8, right? And he played very well against Arsenal. Cool, yeah. right? But he's a 10, not an 8, right? He shouldn't even be in your team, right? You've then got Caicedo and Enzo, quality. Absolutely quality. Mudrick, crap. Sterling finish. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Mudrick, Mudrick, trash, bro. Mudrick has had a better season so far than Martinelli, bro. We're not doing that. Whoopie do. Whoopie do. So this, how can you call him crap then? Who's that make Martinelli then? Martinelli was good Whoopie last do. season, yes, but Mudrick's had a better season than both your wingers, in fact, this season. Yes. In, in, in terms of what? Because impact on in the terms team, of his performances and in, in, in terms in the of the league. league. In terms yeah, of your team is at about 12. Like, come I, on. I, I, that's fine. You can talk about the, the league table, but what I'm saying is Mudrick has been playing well. He's been creating chances that haven't been buried. He scored. He scored against you guys. Fluke mm -hmm. or not, he still scored. He played well Martin that, that game. Martinelli's been creating chances that ain't been scored by Eddie and Ketia. Yeah, like, but, come on. Uh, we can all yeah, go but, down this uh, route. He's not very say, good, bro. Say, to say Mudrick's crap, yeah, is, is again, is, is is a stretch. That's your opinion? Cool. But, no, but I've I, seen I, enough sample view, size in 25, 30 games that he's played for Chelsea, regardless mm -hmm. of how poor you've been, like I said earlier on the show, poor players, uh, sorry, poor teams can still have outstanding contributions and players that even if they don't score or, or create, they still have great games. James Madison last season at Leicester is proof in the pudding, yeah? You can yeah. play great in a team that is crap and got relegated, yeah? Because you're a top player and you could do that at every club. If you take Mudrick out of there and put him somewhere else, is he going to do well? Probably not, because he ain't that good. Sterling's finished. Yes, he's. I think he's been one of your better players this season. He's had purple patches in games. And, he, and he's looked decent. But let's yeah. be real here. You're saying Martinelli's had a poor season. I don't think Martinelli's had a poor season. He just I didn't say he's had a poor season. I said, I said Modric's had a better season than him so far. Well, because he's scored That's a goal more than him. Which, which no, no. A I'm talking about his performances and his uh, overall since he's been since he's been starting for us. He's, he's had a better Lots season than Martinelli. Watching so up at Arsenal, bro. Trust me. I've, I've literally watched all your. I've literally watched all your games, bro. Before before before, before Martinelli before Martinelli got injured, right? Um, his best performance came up against Aurier at Forest. Other than that, he was poor. He kept getting subbed off. He got injured, came back, right? Played well against Man City. That was when he had that was probably his best performance of this season. But Mudrick's had more than what more than what two good performances this year, bro. I can pick out a few. Well, a few good he's played pretty well this all season. He played very well at the weekend as well, got hooked. Yeah, but again, mm. we're in Europe, you're not. So we have to think about that. We're, fine, in, we're in the Carabao <laughs> Cup tomorrow, so we're thinking about that as well. We were playing a team that were Bottom of the league, minus 20 goal difference. Oh, it's not, it's not bigger to price. Yeah. Look, I test is I test. On, on Premier League, right? On no, let stats. me just ask one, one question. Sorry, go on, go on, go on, go on. Right now, are you telling me you'll take Mudrick over mm. Martinelli? Yeah, I would. Wow. Whoa. Okay, let's, let's go on to the right one. Cole, Palmer, Cole Palmer's walked into, Man <laughs> uh, sorry, into Chelsea and looked extremely good. Yeah, he's looked right. extremely good. Yeah, and when I raised an eyebrow because I was like, right, 40 million quid. He only ever scored, he only ever played 40 appearances. That's a million quid of performance. Yeah. Like, right? is he that good? Cool. Fair enough. He played very well against us in the community shield for City. He played very well in the game against us at the bridge. Yeah. And right. he's been very good for you this season. Yeah. Would I take him at Arsenal? He ain't getting in over Bakayo Saka, but I'd take him because I think he's a decent player. Is he the level to overtake Saka and take his position? Probably not. So on that basis, do I really want him? Like maybe I'll I mean, take him. Better, backup, better, but I don't better. want backups in my club. I want players that are coming in to take the first team players spot, and that's how you get help competition. Be better than Odegaard this year. Yeah, Palmer's been better than Odegaard this year. Rated. Never. Yeah, rated. but then, yeah, but Palmer can play in midfield, bro. I was when I when I when we signed him, I said he can play as a ten. I was getting cooked. Yeah, but Reece Nelson can play as a ten. Madison playing as a ten. I wanted Madison. Yeah, I want Pedro Neto at Arsenal. Pedro Neto is better than Cole Palmer. Don't care what anyone tells me. That guy's sick. Yeah, yes, he's injured. He's a better winger than Palmer, I'd say. It is quality. Left foot, right foot, direct, rapid. Yeah, can jink past people for fun. Cole Palmer's a slightly different type of player. But then I go to your front line. What have you got? And you lot are pinning your hopes on Nkunku, who is a very good player from what we've seen in Germany. Yeah, but having said that, you read out a list of players that included Kai Havertz. I think you put Werner on the list, potentially. I don't know. Maybe yeah. yeah, but again, three players that you read out came from the Bundesliga and you're pinning your hopes on Nkunku doing it in the Premier League. Yeah, when you've seen three players from the Bundesliga come to your football club in Pulisic, yeah, Havertz and Werner do absolutely nada and you're pinning your hopes on Nkunku. Bro, listen, 
Good that, luck. That's, and, that's where, and that's where I got to agree with you, Lee. Yeah, listen, the club is depending on Nkuku too much. Do you know what I'm saying? All these playing people out of position. Poch keeps using Nkuku as an excuse. I'm not using that, bruv, because end of the day, I'm sceptical as well about the whole situation. As much as I like Nkuku, as much as I believe he's a good finisher, again, we have to see him do it in this league. But I do think that he, he can finish a lot better than any of the attackers that we've got right now. And people yeah, in the chat, I'm, I'm, not say, I'm not saying... I'm not saying that Martinelli, sorry, um, Mudrik is better than Martinelli because right now Martinelli is better than Mudrik. Yeah, he's w way more poly uh, polished than Mudrik. But I remember when Martinelli was first coming up, he wasn't as, as good as what he was right now. But end of the day, well, that, well, Mudrik correct because Martinelli scored eleven goals in his first twelve. No, but I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking about overall, bro. He's got a lot, he's got a lot more polish. Martin, 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 no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Bro, bro, when he first, when he first came yeah, through, are you telling me that he was as good as what he was now? Martinelli scored, well, definitely wasn't. scored on his debut pretty much in every competition he's played in. Right? Not only yeah. that, under Unai Emery, yeah, that guy scored, I think, 10 goals in his first 9, 10, 11 appearances for Arsenal. And that was an mm. Arsenal team, by the way, that was deemed mm. no good, toxic and negative. Yeah, And that guy yeah. was absolutely ripping it up, scoring headers, scoring screamers, jinking past everybody. I see him cooking Trent at Anfield two years straight. Yeah, absolutely cooking him. Yeah, Martinelli, when he came to Arsenal... Yeah, we were like, wow, this kid is unreal. I don't see that with Mudrick. Yeah, what he does yeah. is run in a straight line and nah, keep the ball on. out of play. Yeah, yeah, this, I, wanna, guys, I want to interject for a minute. Just on the statistics this season, so I test aside on the statistics. Mahalo Mudrick, two goals, no assists, and he creates 0 0.6 chances per 90 minutes. So it takes him two games to create a chance. Wow. Martinelli this season, one goal, two assists, and creates 1.6 chances per game. So Martinelli mm. hasn't scored as many, but he is more creative. He has been more creative this season. So I, I don't know. I, listen, I think Mudrick's got some talent, but I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't. Sorry, be, yeah, I, so, I'm, I'm, Martinelli, I would take Martinelli. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'll, 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 I'll be. I'll be real with you. Oh, yeah, where, where I call you at, Don, is yeah. I think if you if you were stood there and someone said right now you could have Martinelli in an ass in a Chelsea shirt. And get, mm. but it means you lose Mahalo Mudrik. You definitely take Martinelli. You know you. Bro, would, I, I love I love Martinelli, bro. But the thing is, end of the day, Mudrik here. Yeah, he came into the club. He came into the club last year, right? In a finished club of Graham Potter and Frank Lampard, right? Finished players, by the way, the worst players I've ever seen at Chelsea. The whole twenty six years I've been on this earth, yeah. And on top of that, bro, Mudrik has literally didn't even have more than fifty appearances, bro. Playing playing um senior football, right? This is a guy that you need to develop and coach, but he has all the attributes that I like in wingers. He's strong, he's quick, he's got skill. He just needs to refine all of these things. And I think he can definitely become a top, top player. That's the reason why I wouldn't swap him for Martinelli. It's not to say Martinelli's crap. I'm just saying that I believe Mudrik can definitely go to, to, a, to, a, to a top level. Do you know what I mean? Very, very um, high level. Yeah, that's why, and that's why that. Arteta how wanted him. How many appearances did Martinelli have in the fourth division of Brazilian football before we signed him? Bro, Martinelli's good. I'm not. I'm not disregarding. No, no, Martinelli. You're, Martinelli's saying, better than you're, you're saying Mudrick's come into yeah. a finished Chelsea team, yeah, that was struggling. He had hardly 50 appearances for his clubs around the world and whatever in Shakhtar, wherever. Mm. Yeah, well, Martinelli was playing in the fourth division of Brazilian football. Yeah, how many appearances yeah. did he have before he came? Yeah, he weren't playing Champions League against Real Madrid. He weren't yeah. playing Champions League against Celtic. Yeah, he weren't playing in the decent league. Yeah. Okay, the Ukrainian league's not great, but it's but guess, guess, guess what the difference is. Guess what the difference is. The difference yeah. is Martinelli was training with with the with the big man at Brazil national team when he was in the mm. fourth division of Brazilian football. Why? Because they knew he was going to be a sensation. Yeah, and I'm not saying he's world class because he ain't. Yeah, but he has world class potential, and facts, if he carries facts. on on the trage trajectory, yeah, he will become a top top winger. Right, and not only that, he can also play up front. When he first came to Arsenal. Bro, I don't really like him up front. I don't really like he him was up front. Slapping like goals him. for fun under Unai Emery in his first season. Yeah, in all competitions. Yeah. You see, that season, right? That first season, Gabriel Martinelli, right, scored 10 goals, four assists in 26 appearances, right? Mm. Right. And two of them, four of them goals came in two games in the EFL Cup. Yeah. Three in seven and three assists um, in the Europa League. He got one assist in the FA Cup and he scored three in 14 in the Premier League. That was his first season, right? He scored two against Standard Liège and an assist. Um, one against Victoria. Yeah, an assist against Frankfurt, an assist against Standard Liège. Right, then he scored against West Ham. Cool. But Lee, though, Sheffield we're spending United. too much. He's spending against, too much he scored time. against you lot, bro. You put bro, wait, hold, on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about the rest of the players now because we spent a lot of time on Martinelli. Again, I rate Martinelli. 
He's better than Mudrik, but I wouldn't swap him for Mudrik is the point that I'm making. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Because I believe that Mudrik can also get to the level that you're saying Martinelli can get to. And let me I just say one more thing. I think he's got all the attributes to get very there. Quickly, yeah? One more Go thing on. very quickly. In the 14 appearances he made in the Premier League where he scored three goals, he actually only yeah. got in the starting 11 six times. So he came off the bench eight times. Yeah. So who else then? Who else is who else is then that, that you rate at Chelsea then? So uh, Cole Palmer's crap. decent. Yeah, mm -hmm. your right backs, both of them are decent. One just can't stay fit. Yeah, the two, uh, the two midfielders, Enzo um, and Caicedo. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Thiago. Other than that, I'm struggling, bro. I can't lie. Mm, fair. fair enough. Because they, how many of them are getting in Arsenal's team that I've named? Yeah, well, your right backs, mm. I don't think, are getting in. One can't stay fit and the other one ain't getting in over Ben White. Yeah, your midfielders, fair enough. I'd say Enzo gets in our team right now. Yeah, Caicedo is he mm. getting in over Rice? Probably not based on current performance. Yeah, because Declan Rice has been brilliant so far for us. Yeah, he's probably been our best player. Yeah, Caicedo, yes. I like him and I wanted him and I think they could work together. But I think Enzo would suit Rice's game and vice versa better than Caicedo and Rice right now. Yeah, because we missed that. Yeah, the, the chance creation from where we're playing Havertz or, or somebody else there. Yeah, All right. So I think Enzo would get in our team. Other than that, none of your players get in our team. Not to one of your players other than Enzo right now getting our team. Yeah, listen, and that's fair enough. That you can't argue that you you lot have a larger sample size of doing what you did. You lot competed last year. You know, right now you're what um basically in a title race already. So I can't even argue that. Do you know what I'm saying? But football's not played by combined elevens. End of the day, that doesn't take away the fact that we've got a good team. Do you know what I'm saying? People want to run away from it. We've got a good team. Yeah. And end of the day, like I said, we need to go out in January. We need to be really aggressive, and we need to go get a striker. And at the same time, as much as we need a striker, the players right now need to take responsibility. I'm not going to just throw 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 the um the towel in the um for the towel in and say, oh, we can't do anything until we get a striker. No, it doesn't work like that, bro. It doesn't. Mm. We're playing. We're paying Raheem Sterling what 300 bags a week, right? This guy needs to be burying these chances. Jackson, he needs to stop. You know, work on his movement. Posh needs to coach him better. When it comes yeah. to his movement, on, on match of the day the other day, I'm hearing they slandered him about his movement, right? These are just basics of the game. Why are you not understanding that you need to be in the danger zone if you're a striker? You need to get in there. And, he, and the annoying part is he's tall as well. All you've got to do, we whip in so many balls, Lee, yeah? And he's never there, bro. Pause. He's never there. The guy yeah, is never in the box. Would be. Look, at his, look at his output of Villarreal. Mm. Yeah, bro, I watch the Spanish League every weekend. The guy was dead in La Liga. What makes you think he's going to cook in the Premier League? I, I did say we needed another strike of him. But when you, go back, when, you, when, you, when you go back to summer, bro, the market, again, very thin. I was very yeah, skeptical. What, what makes you then think you, you would mm. go and get Ivan Tony Because you've got this under-25 policy, which is apparently the reason nah, you come on. Madison. Do you, do you really believe that? Do you really well, yeah, believe that? Because you've signed other than Sterling. Listen, listen, we're, we're, trust me now, we're not going to stay away from Tony because he's over 25. We're going to be in for him in let January. Me tell you now. Yeah, let me tell you right now, yeah? Tony ain't going to Chelsea. He's going to Arsenal. We'll see about it. We'll see. But I, we know I, what. I, I we know we, we, I we know. know. Oh, you know this year. All right, cool. We know what happens when Todd when Todd Bowley and Barley want something, innit? We know. Yeah. We know what happens when they want something, don't we? Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see about we'll see. that. We'll see about I, that. Trust me, I already know. It. And and I'd, I'd say, yeah, I am ninety five percent sure Ivan Tony is signing for Arsenal. Ninety five percent sure that he is signing for Arsenal. There's no I way that, really near that that going to Chelsea. I don't see him going to Tottenham. Yeah, if he wants to go and try to elevate Arsenal into title challenges, yeah. that is a better prospect than going to a Chelsea youth project where he's probably going to be one of the oldest players in the squad. Right when he's coming into his last proper contract, why would he? Yeah, go but then you're yeah, but you're contradicting yourself, bro, because you literally just said that we need more experience, and now you're saying that he's going to be yeah, one of the few. But your, that, your that whole project is set up not to buy experience. The only experienced player you've signed under mm. that regime, really, is Raheem Sterling. No, the we rest signed we, under the age of twenty-five, eight year. No, contract. no, no last year most of bro, most right most now. of the players most of most of the players that we signed last summer were all experienced players. We signed Cucurella. We signed Koulibaly. Uh, we signed yeah, Aubameyang. We signed... No, bro, he's, he's, he's experienced, bro. How many How many games did he play yeah, in Spain? How many he's games 22. did he play for Brighton? Let me line my point, because you just you just said something which is incorrect, right? In the summer, we signed mo mostly experienced. It's only as of January onwards, when the when the recruitment team came in, went to a different avenue and started to sign younger players. That's when Bowley left all the footballing, um, like, left all the footballing stuff, right? But in the summer, bro, we signed Aubameyang, we signed Sterling, we signed... um. Who else did we sign? We signed uh, Cucurella, we signed Koulibaly. That's yeah. all experience, bro. We signed experience at that time. And that, they didn't work out, most of them. 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but so, you're, you're saying experience. Kukure is 25. I just Googled him now. He's 25. Yeah, so yeah, you can have How many experience. appearances has he, had, has he got? He's doesn't matter. You're mixing up what I said. Yeah, two things can be right at the same time. Yes, you can have experience. But yes, your policy is sign under 25s. Because we've seen that. Mm. Yes, you've got a Bamiyang. Cool. You had a Bamiyang. Yes, you've had Sterling there now. Other than mm. that, pretty much every single other signing under that regime you've got so far has been under 25. Been young, yeah. Kaiyo yeah, Saka yeah. has played nearly two, um, 250 professional games for club and country nearly. Yeah, he's 22. So he's got experience, but he's also the profile that Chelsea are looking at. He's under 25. Let, right? let me ask you, Lee, do, do you honestly think here yeah, that with the ambition that Todd Bowley and Igbali have, right, and we've already seen that they're, they're willing to spend money, do you think that they're not going to try to rectify their mistakes and bring in more experience and win? Because the main thing they're here for is to win, right? Do you honestly think that from here it's just downhill for Chelsea? I think you could potentially get out of it, but the problem is I just don't see how you can keep spending at the level of spend that you're doing now without landing yourself in big trouble. Because let's be real, is anyone going to go and give you the money back for half of these players you've signed? I don't even know who half your players are, bro. Like, I looked at your team at the weekend when I was doing my watch along. I was watching the last 15 minutes of that game. I'm like, who's Washington? I didn't even know who he was until Gooney told me his name. My lad, my lad, David like, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah, Ch Chukwemeni. Yeah, cool. He scored against us at uh, last season. <laughs> cool. Yeah, like, who are, uh, who are these players, bro? Right? You mean, you mean my break my break is the one that scored against you. <laughs> You've signed some very good players. Gusto's a very good player. Enzo's a very good player. But again, they fit the under 25 model. Yeah. Under mm. 25. So you can be experienced. Kukurea was a very good player at Brighton. Yeah, you've got Colwell there, right? But you've got 39-year-old Thiago Silva there. He's the anomaly to this whole team because you've kept him there, yeah? And Raheem mm. Sterling's the anomaly. Other than that, they're all looking around at each other. Thinking, Where are like, where's the... If Thiago Silva and Sterling are injured, they're all looking around thinking, oh, who's the leader here? What do we do? How do we get out of this? So you're going to have to go down the route of going and signing experienced players. But then that breaks the model that you want. Because the model is, go and sign players on seven, eight-year contracts, right? And because you're not in Europe, I think you can still potentially get away with that. I may be wrong, yeah? Right? Mm -hmm. But if he was in Europe, you can't do it, apparently, right? But mm. when, does, when does it come to the point where the balance sheet, the math ain't mathing, bro? Yeah, because there's going to come a point where you can't just keep throwing four, five, six hundred nice. million pounds at it without looking at it going, wow, we're minus 800, we're effed it. And that's exactly why, and it's, that's exactly why it has to get to a point where it has to start working, bro. And these mistakes need to start getting rectified. It ain't with, the, no, it ain't with the, uh, right. the players that you have signed, because the majority of players that you have signed are absolute bums and nobodies that ain't as good as everyone thinks they are at your fan base. Yeah, but Lee, that, that, that's when I've got to disagree with you because we we haven't been playing badly this season, bro. We and boys. I want to leave it. They leave it there because I think you both. I just. I want to go to some of these super chats here that have come in. But Babukar says, as a Chelsea fan, I wish we were as good um, as we were in Don's hypothetical world. Uh, Todd Reckless B <laughs> is the worst thing that has happened to our club. Uh, my guy here uh, says Reese James is the most balanced English right back. You should. There's one more thing you put at the end of that when fit. Um, that needs to be added to that sentence. Don should never call any other fan base deluded again, is what Tony what about, Bloom What have I said that's deluded? You, you tell probably, me, bro. Probably Mahalo Mudrick's better than Martinelli. That I, didn't that. That, yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And like, what did Martinelli do when he came I didn't to say that. I said I wouldn't swap it. I said I wouldn't swap it. Again, again, Don. Again, Don. So this is what this is what I would say, right? You In life, you don't... We're not in a court of law. This is like the, you're being judged by a public opinion. <laughs> you saying one's in better form and I wouldn't do a swap is just a roundabout way of saying one's better. Because for me, that yes, you've not actually said those words. So in a court of law, we couldn't we couldn't get you. But in reality, and then, we and actually, incorrect information it. was Martinelli's outperformed him statistically this season by yeah. creating more chances. Than True. Uh, this is no, again yes. all these Chelsea players have had better seasons than all the Arsenal players. Yet we are twelve points ahead of you after ten games. <laughs> laughable, what Charlie says. Yeah, because you can finish better than us. That's why. I think the weirdest thing that's well, going really. on here is... Well, really. Jesus has scored one goal this season. Martinelli scored, what, one or two goals this season? Yeah, Odegaard mm. scored three goals this season. One one of them was a penalty. Yeah? Like, come on, we ain't scored that many goals from our attacking players this season. Yeah, but overall, bro, your whole team can finish. Enzo in front of goal has been poor this year, bro, and he plays in midfield. He's been poor in front of goal. 
he has. Uh, Saka, 13 games, 11 GA. Don uh, Mudrik is better. Uh, delusional. Um, he didn't say he was better than Saka, though, but yeah. Uh, sorry if it's off topic, but it, but is Lee still Arteta out or in? Uh, if we could get a clear answer. <laughs> With a laughing <laughs> emoji. I actually like that. Uh, Chelsea fans, stop it. Uh, stop it. Uh, get some help if you think uh, mud shit uh, is better than Martinelli. The uh, with FFP and the loan uh, system changes debt um, and the Roman model isn't possible anymore is what Gav says. That, uh, that Roman model expired, bro. Yeah, it expired. I was criticizing it even when it was winning stuff. I said we need to change mm-hmm. things up. I disagree. So, to the two most successful, or two of the most successful clubs in the world, higher and fire, left, right, and center. Buying yeah, but uh, yeah. Have, you, have you heard what Lampard said, bro? He said he even said himself here yeah, we needed most. Um, we need the more stability at the time. I'm yeah, going to definitely say that because he gets he gets in your feelings as a Chelsea fan, bro. Because he's a club legend. He's your all-time top goal scorer. He's going to say that because he wanted to keep his job. He wanted the job in the first place. Yeah, he's going to say that to get Chelsea fans on side because he's a Chelsea fan. Yeah, like because he played for him for so long, he's managed him twice. The fact is, yeah, two of the most successful clubs in the world and two of the biggest clubs in the world, higher and fire, left, right, and centre, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. Yeah, in the last 20 years, they've had like 19 yeah, managers but each. I, and they keep I, winning. I, I, I've told you already, it stopped working. We became a we became a, a, a cup, a cup club. That's what we it became. It stopped working <laughs> because Abramovich was forced to leave the club. And now you've got a cowboy running running the club. Yeah. It's gone away from actually win now by the best players, not just the young talent. Yeah. Roman never did a youth see, project. See, Roman did the get the best manager, get the best players. See, Lee, Lee dismissed the facts that I came with at the beginning, Terry. I'm not gonna go through them again, but yeah. <laughs> uh, this year says uh, D- D- Di Matteo won a Champions League and an FA Cup in 2012 he's unemployed since 2016 when he was sacked by Villa in the Championship of course trophies help your CV but they can paper over cracks now, I understand that and I, but for me if you've got a manager who's done 10-15 years um, a- as a manager at, at big, decent sized clubs and never won anything and, you know, and been sacked from them all Di Maria can Di Matteo can still say I won a Champions League and FA Cup well, and he's achieved more. Dan had a job and he won three in a row in the Champions League. Yeah, he, he still achieved more. And again, I, what I didn't say, if you go back to those tweets, I know this is, is about not tweets, an Insta thing. I didn't say a manager manager's credentials and CV is all about trophies. The point we laughed at was saying trophies don't enhance your credentials. So let's not reframe the argument. Of course, trophies help with your credentials. Uh, please predict Arsenal and Chelsea, uh, City's next three Premier League fixtures. The way City struggled without Rodri tells me they are an injury away from winning nothing. Oh, reason number 5,652 billion. Why Arsenal win the league this season? Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you boys. Um, he came, he, he won his eighth Ballon d'Or yesterday. Uh, Lionel Messi, it, it's caused a little bit of controversy. A lot of people didn't feel that his overall season deserved it. But um, I know you agree with it. Don, do, 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 Lee agrees with it. Do, do you agree that like, did, did Lionel Messi deserve yeah, to win true. the Ballon d'Or yesterday? Do you know what, Terry? It's a sticky one because there's arguments for both sides, man. Like, you can put up a strong argument for Messi and you can definitely put up a strong argument for Haaland. But what Messi done for Argentina in that World Cup, bro, like, he literally dragged them through it. Do you know what I mean? He, turned, he was the best player in that tournament, turned up in the final... Turned up in every 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 single game, pretty much for them. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's the that's the World Cup, man. That's the biggest stage when it comes to football. So I think I think it I think it deserved it. But if it went the other way, I can see why it would go the other mm. way as well. Like it could go either way. There's a, there's good arguments for both sides if that makes sense. Um, but for me, I think I think I think maybe maybe Haaland should have got it. You know, like the amount of records that guy broke in his first year, right? And to win the treble like that, Man City struggled year on year to win the Champions League. As soon as they go and get him, he, he goes and wins them the Champions League. You know what I mean? He, he broke Alan Shearer's record in his first year. It, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one, man. It, it's, it's so tough, man. But it, it could go either way. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of this one. I can't lie. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? Me, me and Lee had this conversation a little while back. If, if you're someone who views it as who is the best footballer in the world, they just deserve to win it, you know, whether they've been out injured, whether they've played, whether they won anything, then Lionel Messi gets it. I think if you're someone that views as who achieved the most in the last year, 
then I think you look at it and go, what Haaland did in terms of the goals, the records, the individual records at his age, winning a treble. I think he achieved a, a, a in greater his first body season. of in his first yeah, season a, as well. A, a greater body of work, and I suppose that's what it comes down to. There is no clear definition of what the Ballon d'Or award actually is. We know it's for the best player in the world, but if you look over the history of it, many people that at that time weren't the best in the world have won it based on achievement. So I understand why the argument is is there for is there for. Uh, Hoyland, you've got the Ronaldo conspiracy theorists that believe that they've all FIFA's always favoured him, so it was a way of let's just get make sure he gets completely clear of him. Yeah. Personally, I've never been someone that puts that much stock in these awards because I think they're more about popularity. And and, and by the way, once Messi retires and Ronaldo's already gone from that phase, the way M- Mbappe and Haaland are the next two, and they're already there in number second, number no, two, and three. Getting Jude Bellingham, mate. Mm. Now, Jude Bellingham will fly into it, could, could fly into it as well. He, he certainly could if he keeps scoring the way that he is. But yeah, I've got no issue with Messi winning it. What you said, I was out of the World Cup. I was out there that whole time. And it was just, it was magical to be there and watch it and experience it. And when I flew over, me and KJ were on a plane full of RGs. And it was a mad experience. And when we were flying back, we were on a plane full of RGs. On the way back, they were making no noise because they were so hung over. It was mad. Wait, but, remember, yeah, but for, people forget that, that Messi crazy. won a World Cup. He won the French Cup. He won the French League. He won the French Super Cup. Yeah, he won a trophy in the MLS. Although I think that was... Well, actually, maybe. May, I think that was maybe after the voting finished. So but let's not forget, he's won a World Cup and he won three trophies in France last season. So there's four trophies. Yeah, people forget right? Right, and he dragged his country to a World Cup, and people were saying it was a rigged World Cup. Well, you've still got to win it. Yeah, well, yeah, and you're going up nonsense. against probably the best team in the world, which is France. They're better than Argentina on paper. They've got better players all over the park. Yeah, like let's just be real with it. And he turned up in every single game, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but they got penalties. We well, still got to score them. Yeah, you still got to score them. Not only that, he had 57 GA last season in, in all competitions apart from the World Cup. So domestic competitions, he had, mm-hmm. and I think maybe international, I think that includes, but he had 57 GA last season. So if we're talking about Haaland, cool, whatever, fantastic. How can the best player in the world have less than 50 touches a game? I'm sorry, I don't see it. Don't see it. Yeah, well done, you broke records, you've scored loads of goals. If anyone had a better chance of winning it from that Man City team, yeah, it's Alvarez or Rodri. Yeah, how can the best Lee, would player... You, would you, would you, would you, the world's best player award, yeah? The world's mm. best player has less than 50 touches. I'm sorry, that don't work. Lee, we, we know we know Messi, obviously, we know Haaland's not a better footballer than Messi, than, than Messi, right? Different different players, how they play the game, right? But would your opinion change if like Haaland scored in the final, if he scored in the semis as well? Because I've seen a few people um like speak about how Haaland, oh, he didn't score in the semis, he didn't score in the final. Would your opinion change if he if he bagged in, in those um in those rounds in the in the Champions not, League? Not really, because like listen, it's a team sport. You've all got to chip in collectively, yeah. Right, so I, I see a lot of people talking about oh Kai Havertz scored in the Champions League final, yeah, and and I see big up Carefree Lewis. I see a show he did, can't remember who it was with, and he said, "What's harder to do, score against City or keep a clean sheet against City?" Well, it's harder to game, keep bro. a clean sheet, right? Mm. Yeah. So why is Havertz the guy because he scored the winner when the defense for Chelsea kept a clean sheet in that final? Yeah, it's harder to keep a clean sheet. So. Just because you're not scoring in the final doesn't necessarily mean you haven't shipped in, yeah. Well, so, so I want, I want to read something out to you. He's an elite level goal scorer, and, and if he carries on going at 40 50 goals a season, he's going to break mad records, yeah. I don't think he'll overtake Messi and Ronaldo in terms of goal output, yeah. But at the same time, I don't think a player with 50 goal con- uh, sorry, 50 touches on a football pitch, treat. yeah, 50 <laughs> touches on a football can be considered the best player in the world. I'm sorry, I just don't see so, it. I hear you on that, but what's also important to do, I just Google Ballon d'Or voting criteria, and this is always key to understand because we often find ourselves as football fans debating things without knowing the premise or the framing. So it says in 2023, there was a significant change to the Ballon d'Or evaluation. And this is so key when you think about previous winners till now. He says individual performance and the candidate's decisive and impressive character take pr- mentality uh, take precedent over the collective aspect and trophies won. It then says, as well as the player's class and sense of play. So what they're now looking at is their ability and their sense of play and how they look. And they're looking at the player's 
when I, when I when again, I would still love to ask somebody at FIFA, uh, not at the Ballon d'Or, to break down what mm. they mean. But they're decisive and impressive character. That says to me their clutch moments, how they drag their teams through. Now, if they're taking that players' class and sense of fair play and their character more important than the trophies they've won. It tells you in the past, it was it was nearly always someone that had won the Champions League or had won oh, wow, most wow. of the trophies that had, yeah, yeah. That had, that had won it. So this tells you it's changed. So if you look at all those things there, players' class, sense of play, and then his decisiveness, then Messi does deserve it because what he did for his nation at his age in a World Cup, and then you look at his class and his his, his sense of um, I mean, his sense of fair play is just someone who's obviously not not a dirty bastard, but you know the player's class. Of course, Messi's class is always going to be. But I think Messi at fifty will have more class on the ball than what than. Bro, look, look what he did. Yeah. Look what he did to Guardiola. Guardiola's one of the best young yeah, defenders yeah, 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 yeah. in world football. Look what he did to Guardiola, and this guy's yeah. what thirty five. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. There's, there's a comment in there saying, Lee, if that's the case, um, then why did Messi win it over Xavi and Iniesta? Because Messi is miles clear of both of them. Yeah. And Xavi and Iniesta are unbelievably gifted footballers. Yeah. But Messi won it over both of them because he's miles better at football. Yeah. And for and me he, personally, yeah, yeah, every sorry. year that Messi has played football, he should have won it because he is the best player player and it is the best player so, award yeah. he's the best player every year since he broke into passes team so i understand that but again, what you got to remember here so they they're not looking they never used to look at individual performance or, or the candidates decisive actions or the players class as a primary reason it was voted on um what they helped their teams to collectively win and achieve so if you had a year where messi ronaldo maybe scored more goals and his team won more trophies, or they did a they did they 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 went back to back Champions League winners. I can understand why he wins it because the the and that's what you have got to remember when you're voting as a judge, you can't give a personal opinion per se. You can be subjective, but only within the objective parameters. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You can't. You wouldn't be able to vote and go. I'm voting Messi. Why? Because I just think he's technically a better footballer. But that's not a voting criteria. It's who achieved the most this year. And you can't. It, then it becomes an objective decision. I actually prefer how it is now. Because it's based on how that player made you feel, those moments that they had, the way they look. That's a little bit, that's completely subjective, which means you'll get the right person maybe winning it. So, or, well, it's, it's well, different. No, you might not you you just have people standing. Yeah. And I think it's, is, is it journalists that vote for that? Yes. French journalists. Yeah, journalists that vote for that. So you'll have journalists, yeah, that are messy stands. You'll have journalists that are Salah stands and so on and so forth. Yeah. Right? And there'll be journalists that are in with Arsenal, in with City, in with other clubs around the world that are obviously going to vote for a player that's in their club, yeah, unless they're not completely biased. Yeah, I don't know if the voting is open so the clubs can see and everyone can mm -hmm. see who voted for who. Yeah, I don't know whether it's a secrecy thing. I don't know. Yeah, but let's be real. He is the best player in the world, even at his age. And people say, oh, but he plays in the MLS. And what? Yeah, that guy can play football for another five years in the MLS and still mash work and he'll still be the best player ever. Yeah? Because nobody's better than him, Terry. To turn up in a World Cup, right? To turn up in a World Cup, his last ever World Cup, and do what he did. Yeah? There was a, there was a bit against uh, Holland where he had the ball, three mm -hmm. players around him. and in, not, Like, to do that in a millisecond around three players, not Megan. Like, come on, man. Like, no, joke. Yeah? No, Rodri, I, 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 I do, I, 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 I do hear you. Because Rodri I, I did, turned up for his nation as well. I think Rodri should have come no, second. Yeah, I, mean, I, hear, I hear you on that. And again, someone else sent me another criteria that Goal put out that says individual performance in the previous season. It's no longer the calendar year. Uh, team success during the previous season. Player behavior and fair play uh, during the season. And I understand all of that. It's interesting as well because I saw people like, oh, we've got like some United fans. Oh, we've got someone in there. No, I, Onana is not a Man United player in that. He's an Inter player. You <laughs> know, say we have two in the top 30, mate. Well, that was just better than, better than none in the top of right? drinking there, no, I can't that. lie. <laughs> <laughs> soon come, soon come, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is just it. So, if, again, I'm, I'm only going by what people are sending through to me because I haven't, I haven't researched this until we're live. So, you know, I, di I didn't do my homework on it. But if it's also teams, even if it's also team success in the previous season, this is why, as I said before, it can't just be on some... If that's a, a major criteria, it can't just be on who you subjectively like watching the most or who you think has the best touch because they don't win a trophy and that's a major criteria. That's going to go against them. And I, I think maybe that's fair as well. And there's some more super chats here that I want to go to. This says, big up Chelsea uh, politician Don and the standards FC Lee. 
Thank you, Brian. Big up, big up. At least Dom's been cool with it, man. Like, come on. If roles were on, reversed, man. he'd still uh, would have won politics. There's probably a bit of that in there. It's not uh, what... He's the best player I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of good players in my life, and he is clear of everyone. What what they should have done is give the Ballon d'Or to Haaland and the Super Ballon d'Or to Messi as the <laughs> ultimate recognition. I get you. Both, uh, this isn't the first time Messi has controversially won it. Schneider in 2010, treble with Inter and five goals to take Holland to the World Cup final. Well, based on criteria that they were using back then, that that, that, that is still at least a fair argument because he won the treble, which means Barca can't have won as much as him that year and, and Messi couldn't have won as much as him. Plus five goals on the way to a, a World Cup final, but yeah, he, he was, was he was unbelievable that year. He that was year. amazing that year. Mm. He was amazing. No chance bad. Messi doesn't get uh, <laughs> in that city side. Yeah, I mean last season. Yeah, I mean you'd have to. The only person you could drop for him though would either be Gundogan or KDB. Nobody else should yeah, drop no, him. No, he could play anywhere, Terry. You, no, could, you could put him at right, right. and he'd still be the best player on the pitch. I oh, know you just drop you just drop drop um Grealish. You wouldn't miss the, you, you, the ball retention to be there and you get more GA. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, that's not a dig. That, that's I'm being genuine. You'd have the same ball retention, but you'd have more goals and assists. That's an upgrade. All, all you do, like all, you, you could play him anywhere. Like I've seen games in the MLS. He's not playing in everybody. Crazy. He's not a dig at Jack Grealish, but yeah, yeah. No, Sorry. but I've seen the game in the MLS, I think it was in the final. Yeah, where he scored that screamo and he was walking and it was messy cam and they were just following him. He was walking for about a minute and then he see the play unfold and then boom. Yeah, and the players in the MLS, they've been asking him saying, like, what, what do we need to do to get better? He said, walk more. Stop running. <laughs> <laughs> see that. See that. <laughs> uh, if he lost the final, uh, Lee, would you still give it to him? 100%. And, he should, and I said this earlier, he should have won it every single year since he broke into that Barcelona team because he is easily the best player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and I've seen some unreal footballers, man. Yeah, I'm 41 yeah. years old. I've seen some unreal footballers. He is easily the no, best player. And he's a challenge on that, Lee. There's no, you really think he's better than Odegaard? Ghost guard. <laughs> right, man's, been, like, man's been ringing my doorbell all night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, glad I'm going out in a minute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look, I want to thank, uh, obviously, Lee for coming on as ever. Don for joining us and throwing a bit yeah, of challenge. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was love, a really man. good debate. Yeah. I want to thank the viewers, the super chatters, everyone who's hit the like button so far. Make sure you do it again. Back tomorrow um, with Sava for straight facts. We've got match reactions. It's a horrible. I can't believe they're putting all the big teams on tomorrow night and none of them on tonight in the Carabao Cup. Why don't they spread it over two days? Honestly, Sky got their ske- get, get their scheduling mm-hmm. sorted out. But we'll be live after those games tomorrow. Oh, mate, I'm I'm for it, mate. They're com- no, mate, they rip, rip off. <laughs> uh, Lee talks about Messi's penalty shootout in the World Cup like it's a goalkeeper who who is a 95% sa- saving them. Save it. Rodri and Harlan all day long is what Waco's gunner says. still got to score a penalty. Yeah. Big up to Mbappe in that final, by the way, because he scored three penalties all the same way against probably the biggest shit house on penalties in the world. <laughs> <laughs> those, those penalties were good, though. Man. And, those and penalties not good. only that, That's that good. goalkeeper, by the way, the manager who manages Arsenal Football Club right now, binned him for Burnt Leno. Yeah, good one. There we go. Listen, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all.